session number 36 of Outliner's Guide to Lidaria. Hi, everyone! Hello! Oh, we're back! I missed you all. I missed you guys! I missed you so much! Okay, the music sounds a little bit loud. Yeah. Ah. It's at, like, 1% for me. <laughs> oh, it's been... It's been a while. We've we've been having a lot of uh, a lot of holidays, a lot of journeys that have been happening recently. Uh, <laughs> I hope that uh, I, uh, Matt, Dennis, you guys had a great time. Sure did. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, hold on. I wasn't there. You're referring to me going to the other you, side of you, the planet yes, for you, a couple of weeks. You took that a vacation, and you came back, and Dennis happened. took a vacation. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait a minute. I wasn't there for that. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's, no, I, that's why we've been on hold for like two months. It was two. Yes, in a row. I had. I had a great time. Turns awesome. out, I really like Italian food uh, even more than I thought I did. <laughs> it turns out La Spezia is a very beautiful place. Italian food is good food. Mm. All right. Plenty of butter, plenty of cheese, and plenty of olive oil. Mm. We're olive oil experts right now, the, the rest of us, uh, minus Sid. <laughs> that, that's a whole other story <laughs> that we'll, <laughs> we may tell at some point. But for now, let us jump back into da -da -da -da, d d Here's our table. Now, um, things got a little um, m m messed up in terms of who is supposed to do the recap. Because uh, we were like shifting things around for players that were missing. And uh, um, I have given you very little heads up on when we'd actually be playing this again. And I'm giving you the, the VOD. Uh, so what I'm... What I'm going to do this time is that I am going to give a brief summary of what happened last time. And then we're going to do the thing where uh, the inspiration is just going to be up for grabs at some point during the session. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I appear to have misplaced a couple of things, so I'll, <laughs> I'll be getting up later to get them. I need dice, if you can't believe it, to actually no. run d, &D. <laughs> I'm prepared, guys. There's no guys. way you don't have dice next to you. I, I do. It's just not enough sets. They ha they are in my bag. On, on I have some. <laughs> I need I need more d8s for the damage I'm about to do to you guys. Oh, um, great. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's so. fine. It's only d8s, guys. <laughs> I, I can't always upgrade to a higher. I only I have a few d8 hit points. <laughs> 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 so, uh, what happened last time in Outlander's Guide to Lidaria? Uh, you guys, that was a whole session spent in the colony you had just reached, which is Erka, the colony of the gnomes. And as such, it was, of course, full of gnomes, who are your favorites. The session started with you guys being approached by THE gnome, uh, the leader of Erka itself, the Arch Commandant, Algim Empus. Um, and uh, the uh, all the guy wanted to do was uh, to uh, get you a reward for killing the one who stares. As you learned later into the session, the arch commandant wanted one who stares gone because he has an interest in expanding his uh, railway system through the jungle that the construct used to inhabit. Uh, and uh, with uh, the one stairs gone, gnomes are free to proceed with their plan. At least uh, uh, that's what they would like to do. Uh, so you were paid for a job well done, and you uh, did some, some shopping and poked around. Pip made a new friend. Um, and you all went to see this, uh, this uh, railway system, this train, uh, this creation uh, only that are unique to the gnomes. Um, and while you were checking that out, uh, an old face showed up, uh, Gringina, the gnome with whom uh, um, you, uh, you have saved the city of uh, Simlianon uh, some time back. And uh, she had a message for you guys. She told you that uh, the wolf 
which is the deity uh, worshipped by by elves uh, and not acknowledged by the by the Jade Alliance and the Jade Council. Um, the entity also who supposedly literally brought Gringina back from the dead when she died during the Silent War. The wolf had a message for you. Uh, he hopes that your group will consider stopping the production of unmaking powder, the, uh, the secret, uh, uh, the secret creation of the gnomes, uh, whose whose recipe and and uh, an invention is a complete mystery uh, that powers their rifles, their trains, and all sorts of other creations. And according to uh, the wolf through Grangina, the creation of unmaking powder is bad for Ledaria. Uh, and thus, you have uh, received this message from uh, uh, from uh, potentially a, a god, and you are to do with with it whatever you would like. During that same conversation, you have uh, learned uh, a few more things. Uh, according again to Grinjin and the wolf, uh, as he appears in her dreams, is not a literal wolf. At least that is not the, the appearance that he takes for her. But uh, he looks like a man, specifically like a white-haired, purple-skinned elf. Which for you guys that sounded awfully familiar, and you are left to wonder what exactly uh, that means for you guys. Um, a few more things were, were learned, uh, such as uh, uh, how gnomes keep secrets in, in a magical way that literally physically prevents people from speaking about certain things, like unmaking powder itself. Uh, once you were done speaking with Grinjina, uh, Brooke and her... Uh, went away for a short while with him accompanying her uh, to her house and discussing uh, the circumstances of her death and this, this war uh, and the suffering that, that, that both of them have gone through ultimately. And uh, uh, Brooke has apologized for what his kind has done to, to hers and the other way around. And the two of them uh, uh, are now friends! Hmm. Uh, the following day, you guys made, made preparations to leave. Uh, you returned to the toy store where the the kid Minna, who is responsible for the majority of the creation of the mechanical creations in the store, uh, she wanted to speak with Tekka. She wanted to shed an interest in this in this staff that he always carries around and that can be repurposed into multiple different kinds of tools. And while she had permission to check it out, Tekka himself left uh, to look for a tiefling boy that he had heard about, ultimately tracking him down. Uh, leaving him some words of encouragement and uh, giving him, I believe, the entirety of all the money in, in Tekka's possession. Once he returned, he found that his staff had been upgraded and Pepa's purchased a large variety of toys and surprisingly, not all of the available marbles. And then you left. Uh, you left uh, the colony of Urca behind, uh, Pontifex having a, a new horse uh, of his own now. And you decided to follow the, tr the train tracks uh, um, to cut down on traveling time uh, as you guys headed straight back towards Similion. And it's about roughly halfway through this journey when you were suddenly attacked by three constructs, three giant uh, snake-like machines. And that's exactly where we're going to pick back up. So, without further ado, let me bring you to the battle map. Oh boy, okay. <laughs> They're really big. <laughs> Uh, please position yourselves roughly in the center of uh, uh, these three uh, machines. Uh, <laughs> All the lines, just <laughs> zero. Pont it looks like a railway <laughs> map. Pontifex and his horse are currently prone, while Talix and Duchess are fine. I'll place them uh, uh, roughly over here. It should be good enough. Oh, apologies. Allow me to bring back the grid. Oop. Bring back the grid. You will kind of need it. 
Why? Also, I don't have a horse, Minnie. That's true, it's over here. Let's see, if I... Yes. Here is your horse. Needs to be a little bigger. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, it is perfect the way they are. <laughs> you got a pony. Ew. I do not recall what your horse physically looked like. Uh, uh, in terms of I color. was actually just wondering this. Is, I think they're a white horse because of the cat thing. Ah, yeah, that's possible. I know I described it, but there we go. That makes it really easy to distinguish between <laughs> yours. Oh no, no, no! It was a, it was like a salt and pepper. Uh, it was a, it was a roan oh, that's true. horse. That's that true. Yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll leave. Yeah, I'll leave the token to be, to be white. Um, that should be about right. Oh god, I opened it and accidentally make Talix short. Oh yeah, yeah, there's a new horse. <laughs> Yeah, and I have to see if my horse's name is going to fit in the character limit. Oh, no. <laughs> Incredible. It does. No! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Beautiful. Can I you hear you You guys don't even know my familiar's it? name yet. <laughs> Can, can oh. I hear you say it out loud? Uh, yes, this is my new trusty steed, uh, Farum Vas Ekir El Haram. El Haram? El Haram. You need to use more chuk in it. <laughs> I'll just call him. All right. You guys be prone now. Uh, Farum is fine. Uh, yes, perfect. And if you see under my mini, that is also my name. <laughs> you I don't know lift why up it's your in like zebra you have your print, name on but it. <laughs> it is. Okay, let me bring in also Casimir and Fortis. Fortis, get away from that! Oh, hey, well, you'll work on it. <laughs> Casimir, no! <laughs> Fortis, why are you in the vanguard position? You should be in the middle. Stop being meat shields. <laughs> Um, okay. That looks about right. Now I just need everybody to roll your initiative and set it on your mini. Alright. Good start. I always love rolling initiative mm -hmm. with this character. Because <laughs> it has the possibility of being a negative two. Ooh. You're not too big. Help. Does horse go on my turn, or is it its own turn? Uh, normally ridden creatures uh, uh, go on your turn. You just fell off. But I'm not riding, um, yeah. Yeah, roll for why the Why am I 9 own. HP down? Yeah, why, I don't what? know why both, either of us are down in health. I don't oh, remember. You, you probably either. just haven't set them back after the last uh, uh, okay. long rest. Gotcha. Why are we Stop missing? Begging me. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. I love this battle music. <laughs> Guys, I've missed this so much. <laughs> you have to make my token or my horse a token. Wait, what do you mean with that? <laughs> oh, is it? Ah, it's just hidden. My bad. Uh, oh. Here you go. A thousand hit points for you. That's almost enough. <laughs> uh, is there... It may not be player controlled, now that I think about it. Like, you may not be able to access these things. This is... Ah. There. Oh, there we go. It was an NPC. Na -na 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 -na. 
Mm. <laughs> you know you can reduce the hit points by more than one at a time, no, no, right? No, I got it. <laughs> okay, in theory. Almost there. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, what are we gonna do about Talix? Mm. I could play Talix <laughs> if we want. That would be super helpful if someone other than me could uh, uh, handle Talix. Um, yeah, I, I can offer too. Uh, I don't mind. Either way. Do you want to, Sid, since I've got Squeak? Yeah, you, you got multiple characters, so yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Cool. Thanks, man. No problem. Dang, Talix. Talix is good at a lot of skills. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's Good like what know. he built his character for is to be the skill monk. <laughs> okay, so if you could if you could uh, uh, set his initiative, then we should be good to go. There we go. Okay. Excellent. So, uh, beginning with, uh, uh, oh wow, my six are not doing so well. <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, one uh, the that is not my horse's initiative. I don't know why it's. Yeah, it says in the chat that I set it to 17, but in the in the round tracker, it's a 6 for some reason. Let me see. Probably because I had the setting on. Ah. There we go. Yeah, again, my bad, because I decided as an NPC, so it rolled its own initiative. Oops. Uh, okay. So, beginning with Casimir, who, like, seeing these enormous metal snakes coming out of the ground, messing up the railway a little bit in the process. Uh, you hope nobody will think that you guys did this. Um, he... He... Uh, Brooke, you're right next to him, and you can hear him, like, almost snarl for a moment. And then he, like, glances back at the group, glances back at Fortis, and seems to decide, um against doing uh, a certain thing for the time being. So instead he draws a, a, uh, a sword and he slides it across the palm of his left hand and as he draws his own blood, um, he, he looks at the closest uh, um, uh, snake machine and, and <laughs> um, confidently says, I've got this one and leaps forward to attack. Oh yeah, I didn't get my dice like I said I needed to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need more of these. All right, I need so. a fistful of D8s for that Casimir. Oh my god. So yeah, Casimir confidently leaps forward. No, not one and then a four. No! Um, <laughs> confidently uh, uh, leaps over this thing that looks big enough to be able to just eat him whole. Um, and his weapon is completely and utterly deflected by the strong <laughs> metal scales of this machine. You see him almost almost bounce back on his butt, basically. Uh, <laughs> and hoping that nobody has seen that, uh, um, that sad display. Uh, that's Casimir's all, um, uh, turn. So Tekka. Uh, okay. What's the best course of action here? Um. <laughs> okay. Can Tekka try just climbing one of these giant snakes? Absolutely. All right, I want to try that. Yeah, these are these are big enough that you can get on them if you would like. So, uh, go right ahead and roll me an athletics check. Athletics. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna make it a contested athletics check. Okay. I imagine these would be pretty beefy, but for those. You have to beat the 14. 
He did not can't beat the horsey. <laughs> Yeah, so is, is it like Tekka trying to grab hold, but these like metal uh, scales are just that too sharp it's, to like yeah, get a hold? It, they're, they're smooth rather than sharp. Oh, uh, they, it, it looks like they have been created to be uh, able to really easily deflect physical hits. And so like as you try to hold on to them, you, you basically slide down. Uh, if the direction of the scales were inverted, you might be able to, to hold on to them. But the way they're facing, you, you just, yeah you naturally slide towards their tail. God, they're freshly lubed. Mm. <laughs> they're machines, uh, don't make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then Tech has done what he can this turn, so. Okay, moving on to number uh, two, which is the one that uh, uh, Casimir just bounced off of. Uh, and it is when it's next to the NPCs. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go for for Casimir in that case. So, the giant mechanical snake uh, will try to wrap its body around Casimir uh, for a. Successful hit, which guys, it rolled the snake eyes for the damage. Oh my god, <laughs> thematic. <laughs> Let's uh, can like, you just make that like a feature where they they only roll snake eyes for damage? Is that okay? Let's do no. that. This is like a great idea. So uh, what happens is that as Casimir bounces off of the snake, the snake moves forward, and instead of, uh, uh, say, biting it or, hit, uh, or hitting him, uh, he wraps his body around him and begins to squeeze. Um, making, which means that Casimir is currently grappled and restrained. Uh, additionally, since the snake has all the movement in the world, it is going to burrow. Underground. So what I'm gonna do to mark this is that I'm gonna draw on the ground. Sure, good enough. Um, so as the snake moves underground with Casimir um, in, uh, in uh, oh god, wrapped around Casimir, um, this is going to be a hole. Um, it will be a little small. It will be like this big. Um, and through it, you can see the snake is roughly 20 feet down. I'm gonna write that. There we go. Uh, so let's move on to the horse's turn. Um, I have to specify Faroom. Uh huh, thank you. Uh, do I control Faroom whenever yeah. I'm not riding them? Or do yeah, you? you do. Like. Okay. Please take some room, okay, off room's of my hands. Okay, obviously stand up because uh, it's a gigantic snake thing next, uh, and is probably going to move. <laughs> uh, wait, is is Farum in in range of this? Yes. Okay, Farum doesn't. Uh, he's going to try to move. This is probably the death of my new horse. Uh, <laughs> how fast are horses? Thirty. Okay. Uh, oh. oh, wait, no. Uh, disengage action, obviously, and then move. Okay. Uh, that there. Oh, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's not thirty-five. That's actually just thirty. It is uh, uh, sixty feet of movement for. Oh, right, because uh, yeah, by the stamp from Brown, yes. Okay. Uh, that's on it. To squeak. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so Casimir is twenty feet in the ground right now. Mm -hmm. So like, if Pip came up right here and looked down, he could still see like this this squirming metal beast digging yeah. further. Deep. You could even you could even jump in if you'd like. <laughs> no. I'm just saying um, that's an option. Only if you like. <laughs> um. Well, that sucks. Sorry about your friend, Brooke. Uh, <laughs> what can I do about this? 
you can give him a send off salute from the top of the pit. <laughs> <laughs> Just wave. We will remember you as you were. Um. I think. I think. Uh. I think Pip just looks down the hall and you see Squeak right next to Fortis just. Crack. Transition into imp form. Uh, sort of pat his hands a little bit and look over at Fortis and say, Well, welcome to the team, buddy. We got a lot to teach you. What? <laughs> and is going to fly down the hall and try and grab onto the tail of this thing. Okay. Uh, let's let's make the let's make the grapple check. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you can beat this. More just he's more just trying to hold on. Um, but I will. Let's see. Let me find his. That's okay. Right, it's it's not like an actual grapple check because you yeah. wouldn't stop not... its speed and it is right. too big for you to grapple. But I'm I'm just making it like the same <laughs> contested, you know, check. Uh -huh. Um, and, and you cannot beat the twenty three. <laughs> I don't think. Okay. Can you at least like be keeping up with it? Uh, if you have the speed, yeah. Yeah. Forty fly flying speed. Um, okay, and that's gonna be it for this week. Okay, uh, moving on to Talix. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna apologize in advance, I do not know how to play a cleric, so she's gonna <laughs> try things. Let's see how it works. Uh, yeah. As uh, so it's, uh, Talix currently writing? Yeah. Or, uh, oh, that's pretty cool, okay. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna cast, uh, I believe this is Bless. On Casimir, Pip, and Pontifex, because it doesn't state that you need to see the creature. So, I imagine that would still really? work. Yeah, up to three creatures that. of your choice within range. Yeah, and if yeah. you said twenty feet below ground, then technically. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. I never knew that. That's a yeah. very interesting quirk of bless. <laughs> you can bless invisible so, yeah. creatures. Mm. Bless people in the other, like inside of a building that you're not in. <laughs> in other rooms. I bless Walt you. cannot stop the hand of God. <laughs> Something can get like eaten by a giant snake, and from the outside you can be like, I bless you. <laughs> they just feel I better. feel it. I feel it. <laughs> oh, so lucky. <laughs> I feel marginally better at everything after hearing those words. Thank you. You can kind of salt bay some holy water onto it. <laughs> Continue, Sid. For your blessing, uh, up to three people. Yeah, uh, it was Pip, Pontifex, and Casimir, so they get a d4 either to a attack roll or saving throw. Uh, and other than that, honestly... This might be an okay spot to be in, because I think being spread out might be a good choice here. Not certain yet, but yeah. Can't think of a better spot to stand at, at least for now. So maybe okay. just stand here for now. All right. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I made you say this three times, but bless you said, oh, okay, it was Pontifex I missed. All right, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Moving on to Brook. Brook, people just, uh, uh, just, uh, um, said rest in peace to your best friend so <laughs> he got us and i'll go to this guy bonus action self-harm one sec uh um, oh nice that's actually pretty good and i will <clears throat> use what is it called the Crimson Ride uh, with uh, Radiant Damage. Then I will attack the Snake. Twice. Okay. Yeah. That's a 13 hit. A 13 hits. Wow. So 1d4 plus 7 plus 1. No, wait. 1d8 plus 7 plus 1d6. 
17 damage. Okay, remind me the your right damage. What what type is it? Radiant. Ah yes, perfect. And then I try to hit it the second time. Okay. That is a that hit. That seems to hit. Mm hmm. Oh, how do I? Never mind. How do you? How do I? And then 12 damage, and the two is uh, radiant. Okay, perfect. Nice. Um, you have faith that Casimir's got this. You walk away from the hole that he just disappeared into, and instead you, you step between between Talix and one of the other snakes, and confidently, uh, as you draw the, the minimum amount, amount of blood that you need for this, uh, you begin <laughs> slashing, and you're finding these weak spots in between scales where you can slide your blade right through and uh, um, break some of the mechanisms directly inside. And you can feel your weapon bursting with radiant energy directly on the inside, and you're tearing this thing down uh, into its base components. Uh, those were two solid hits. Is that everything from you? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, Duchess is currently acting on uh, on Talix's turn. Um, I may not have said this earlier, but because he's riding it, they move at the same time. So if 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 that just wanted to move, this could have happened. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no movements. Okay. Yeah. Then moving on to... Oh, hey, it's me! Uh, uh, <laughs> the snake number three. Oh, accidentally pressed the wrong button. Um, well, since Tekka is within range, and there, there is... Uh, I think I'm going to roll for it. See if uh, the snake prioritizes uh, uh, Pontifex over Tekka. So uh, an even number is Pontifex. It is an even number. <laughs> okay. So, um, the snake not feeling threatened by Tekka at all, instead it goes for, uh, basically, uh, this is the snake that came out of the ground and knocked the Pontifex and his horse uh, on the ground, so it's just, it's just set on, uh, on going after the, uh, on going after the wizard. So, Pontifex, yeesh. Uh, don't tell me the n number, uh, because I, I might shield this, uh. In fact, if it hits, I'm gonna cast shield regardless. Okay, so I have to tell you like whether I hit. Yeah, yeah. I just have to know whether or not it hits. Your armor just class is currently nineteen. Uh, I probably don't have my shield on account of was riding the horse, so okay, my so AC 17. is probably seventeen. All right, I still miss. Oh, okay. <clears> cool. <throat> then never mind. No shield. Wait, they haven't rolled at advantage. You're prone. Hold on a second. Yep. <laughs> So not on that one. <laughs> How did I miss the brown wizard? I'm so mad. You might think you're slippery, but I am a frog. I invented slippery. I was molded in it. <laughs> I'm going to jail. This d20 has let me down <laughs> sufficiently. <laughs> uh, that that is the so you guys turn. Sorry, you laughing. She's cracking I up could, over that one. I could hear. Yeah, I can hear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Fortis, uh, Fortis has a bow. Uh, he, he's going to try to make himself useful by leaning over the hole and try to shoot not at Pont, uh, not at, not at the Casimir, but at the snake that's currently holding him. Um, oh hey, I hit, I hit with your allies, but not with my villains. That's sad. Okay, that is. Snake number two is hit. And that's everything from Fortis. Uh, you hear him shout down the hole. Uh, we're, 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 we're coming for you, just, just hold on. Um, and let's see this snake uh, fight back against Brook. Let him try. <laughs> so Brook uh, does a dirty 20 hit here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it looks like you and Casimir are going to share the same fate as you take 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, the snake wraps itself around you and uh, it's directly over the rails. So it's gonna go... Um, 
10 feet over, and then uh, 10 straight down with you. Oh. So I'm going to just mark this, this hole as well. Oh, I forgot it's smaller. Yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Pontifex. Uh, sorry, I was, I was finding him. Uh, <laughs> uh, Pontifex is going to stand. Uh, right. Uh, and then I'm going to... Uh, what is it to mount a creature? Is it is it half your speed? I believe so. Okay. Uh, then I don't think I can actually get. Uh, I cannot. Uh, so I think he's gonna try to like, whistle out loud like, "Hey, Farum, I know we just met, but I just named you. Come here." <laughs> he's gonna let out a loud like horse whistle that I'm not gonna do to save you guys' ears. Okay. I'm trying to call for room over, uh, and then I guess I'm gonna. <clears throat> uh, just roll an animal handling check. Uh, sure. Uh. uh <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is bless? Is bless skill? Bless. Uh, yeah, bless. Uh, no, that's not guidance. Bless is a okay, attack yeah, yeah. rolls and saves. Yeah. Perfect. He tries the horse whistle and he just, <laughs> <laughs> just kind of sputters it. Oh yeah! The horse the runs faster away from you. <laughs> Pontifex forgets the frogs can't whistle. <laughs> it's kind of now. Well, I'll deal with him later. Uh, <laughs> these are constructs. That's probably not going to work. Uh, Is there like a check I can make to see like like are th these machines, right? It's so, like psychic damage is probably not a thing. Um, it's probably not a brain for me to wreck. That's correct. You've also learned in the past that uh, certain types of magic were particularly effective against uh, uh, Orm's creations. Uh, uh, I remember thunder function. I don't remember if there was anything like in particular that stood out. Was it lightning damage? It was thunder. Oh, it was thunder damage. Okay, yeah, perfect. Then my original plan is perfect. I'm going to cast a Wub Sphere, uh, the Flaming Sphere, thunder damage. Uh, ah, I missed the the Wub Sphere. Yeah. <laughs> Dubstep Sphere. I has named them Skrillex. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna summon the flaming sphere, uh, uh, like, and then smash it into him. So, it, uh, around here where my little mouse is pointing, uh, I guess I have to draw it, huh? I'm um, new to this. Did they give you a marble last time, perhaps? Uh, I don't remember. I should have given you a marble. That's like the perfect thing to give you. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh. components. <laughs> Marbles! What color would you like? Uh, uh I, I guess if I'm gonna use this marble for all of them, we'll just say blue. There you go. Perfect. Uh, so uh, action to to summon Wub Sphere. Bonus action: mash it into creature. Uh, it must make a, a DC 17 Dex save. Uh, Dex. Thirteen. Uh, that is a fair. Uh, so this is this. Uh, eight points of thunder damage. Okay. Uh, uh, Pontifex. Uh, uh, you, uh, you resort. You resort. <laughs> you resort to um, old reliable dubstep sphere. Um, you craft this orb that, uh, with your own unique understanding of magic, instead of being made of, of fire or other elemental forces, it's just pure, um, noise. It's uh, pure dubstep. <laughs> it's pure dubstep. There is some really good music going on right now. Uh, and you, you manipulate it to smash it into this machine. And what you've seen in the past was, um, 
the, the, the metal, the gears, each component that are made of uh, just vibrating until they, they fall out of place and the, and the machines breaking apart. Uh, but this snake, you hear the gears, the, the mechanisms inside of it uh, speed up along with the sound of the sphere. And instead of hurting it, you see that the, the snake seems to be a little faster. <laughs> Reinvigorated oh, no. even by it. I've been bamboozled. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, uh, I guess I'm gonna move over here. Okay. Oh, wait, no, I stood up. Oh, that's true. Uh, yeah, you so were over here. You're I, kind I, out of movement. So I can only go to there with my comically low amount of movement speed. <laughs> Uh, okay, that is that is it. <laughs> Pip. All right. Um, does Fortis have any weapons on him? Uh, yeah, Fortis just shot with a bow. Okay. Uh, did it seem to do anything? Did it make an impact? I made an impact. Yeah. Okay. Um, Pip is going to reach down his pouch, pull out a few of his random stones, cast magic stone on them, um, and. Of the improved uh, variety. Of the improved variety. Uh, <laughs> and then Squeak, as he's sort of weaving down in this tunnel, trying to keep up with this snake. Uh, even though he can't grab on, can he still just touch it? Like, touch the end of his tail? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Then in that case, as Squeak is reaching out with one extended claw and just, like, scrapes the end of uh, the snake... Pip takes out his doll and squeezes it tight in his hand as he's looking down this tunnel. His eyes sort of glow a little bit of green as he casts Bestow Curse through Squeak. Ooh. Okay, what do That's we need to roll? That's a wisdom saving throw. Twelve. Uh, that fails. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so the effect that I'm choosing... Uh, Pip is basically trying to um, immobilize it, constrict it, like it's a constrictor. And so, um, while cursed, the target must make a wisdom saving throw at the start of each of its turns. If it fails, it wastes its action that turn doing nothing. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um... Deaf and unconscious and prone poison. Is there a cursed condition? You know what? I'm just going to change its name. And hopefully I'll notice it when <laughs> we're back to its turn. There we go. Cursed giant mechanical snake. Cool. <laughs> um, okay, so he's also going to hand one of his magic stones over to Fortis and just mime like throwing it at one of the snakes that are still visible <laughs> that's it okay fortis takes the, the the rock and he looks uh a little uncertain about this uh moving on to casimir who is currently uh grappled and restrained um Mm, Pip and Fortis can see at the bottom of the hole uh, that uh, where uh, where Casimir is being held, there's this entire snake machine wrapped almost entirely out around him, and you almost can't see him. Uh, you see one of his arms for a moment, and then you move around, and you no longer see him, and then you see uh, instead uh, one of his legs, and then you no longer see him, and then you see a uh, a large fur covered limb <laughs> uh, the next time you spot him as it seems to have decided that maybe this is the way to go uh, and uh, so he's going to try to he's going to try to uh, break the grapple and he has advantage on it now so uh, this much wow <laughs> they tied, uh, which means that he actually doesn't break free. Oh, but he can try again, because it's an, atta an attack roll, so uh, that is a lot better. Okay, yeah, on his second attempt, um, <clears throat> the uh, the werewolf at the bottom of the hole, I'm just going to put him right here. 
and put you away. Uh, that should work in theory, we'll see. Uh, breaks free from the snake's uh, uh, grasp and begins to uh, climb up and out of the hole. Uh, leaving the snake's reach as he does, so I'm just going to also roll for that. Which is uh, uh, not a hit. <laughs> okay, he just got himself out of the situation on his own. Uh, okay, that's his action and bonus action. Yeah, <laughs> uh, paper next to you. Uh, this large uh, uh, wolf person climbs out uh, and uh, barely gives you like any uh, just just a brief nod <laughs> as he comes out. Uh, One of those sup nods. Oh, that did not work. All right, Tekka, it's your turn. Okay. Um, so Tekka will uh, screw on the block and tackle attachment to his core staff and then try to throw that cable with the hook at the end of it and try to wrap it around the snake's uh, body. You're trying to last with a giant snake? Yes. I love it. Uh, <laughs> let's do that. Great. <laughs> exactly as Tekka would. <laughs> <laughs> have I given you... Um, have I made you like write down a specific check for this in the past? I don't. I can't remember. Okay, let's make athletics. So. Okay. Well, it's just not going to work today. <laughs> you know, I really I rolled really poorly for the snake, but that's still the <laughs> it's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, poor Tekka. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else in your turn? Um Probably just gonna move. Let me think. Would be the best. Maybe to move over here, and then uh, let's see. He is going to. Okay. The wood trigger an opportunity attack from the snake. Okay, that's fine. All right. Uh, that is a fourteen to hit. That's not hit. Okay. Uh, and we're going to use Patient Defense to take dodge action as a bonus. Okay. All right, moving on to the curse, the snake, which means, what did you say, wisdom saving throw? A wisdom save. Ah, uh, ho ho, 19. Okay. <laughs> it uh, may do its turn as normal. Okay, but the effect stays, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Snake number two, five, ten, fifteen. All right. Uh, the three of you that are next to the hole uh, and squeak, uh, see the snake burrow directly beneath your feet. And then you, as the ground shakes, uh, louder and louder, it comes back out on this side. Um, Pontifex, what was the DC um, for for your for your sphere? Uh, and the save. Which actually uh, brings me. I think it's when they end their turn next to it. It's not whenever they just overlap it. Okay. Um, but also, whenever it it whenever I whubbed this previous snake, did it seem to do any damage at all, or was it seem to be not purely beneficial all. for them? Uh, then I would have dropped concentration. I didn't okay. want to interrupt. All right, let's let's just trash it. Do you want to take the ball? Take the ball. Yeah. There you go. Uh, okay, it emerges over here. Whoa, spin. Well, <laughs> 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 one, two, three. Let's just roll a d4 without dropping my die on the ground, possibly, and see who we get. Uh, one, two, three. That's Fortis. Fortis now! Uh, who is hit? Uh, 
And oh boy. <laughs> okay. Fortress is not that strong. Uh, <laughs> um, Pippi just see Fortress being snatched uh, away from you, and uh, uh, he, he he's now the one being tra trapped by by the snake. Um, okay, moving on to Faroom, who with a natural one from earlier, is definitely running away further. <laughs> uh, like this way. Like we'll, off we'll the see. map. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll just. <laughs> that way. Uh, 120 feet. That Assuming there's is... no, like, obstructions or rivers or anything. It's yeah, gonna smash Not into. really. There's a few trees and it's, it's, it's galloping off. Um, that just lifts her chin a little bit with, like, snobby superiority. And she's not afraid. Uh, which means that we're moving on to Squeak. Okay, so. Uh, Squeak followed this thing as it traveled underground. Mm -hmm. So, is he like at its butt? <laughs> yeah, he can. He can be directly beneath it, and and he can like fly out of the hole in this in this spot. All right. Um, in that case, uh, Squeak is going to fly on up, and um, okay. Can he make a help action? Is that something Squeak can do? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, all familiars can. Okay. Um, in that case, Squeak is going to use the help action to try and help Fortis escape from the snake's grip. Okay. Uh, so he's he's sort of flown up on out of this hole and is. Uh, trying to like weave in front of the snake's head and like uh, distract it and if he can try and help pull Fortis out. Okay. Noted. Moving on to Talix. Okay. Um, so Talix is going to ride up next to this snake on the railway track. Okay. Uh, and he's gonna do... Yeah, so probably gonna end up on the right side of the snake. And he's gonna use his walking stick to first strike it um, kind of from the right side. And then it gets this, it's imbued with this auburn glow. And then another strike along uh, like the Duchess's speed uh, direction uh, does an even more powerful strike. So I'm gonna Ooh. just roll for those. Yeah. Oh, I should actually, you know, roll for hit first, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot that part. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Does okay. that hit? A 22 absolutely hits. Okay, so that's four damage. And then the second strike. Uh, let's see here. That's a 20 to hit. Also a hit. Oh, cool. Uh, and this is a magical weapon strike. I don't know if that matters, but just in case. It's five damage. Okay. Talix bravely, um, he and Dutch is bravely approaching the snakes, uh, and yeah, beginning to to hit them. Which one was it? Number two. Yeah, number two. Okay, I got, I got it right. Got it right. Got it right. Mm -hmm. Is that everything for me? I, I think so. Yes. Okay, moving on to Baruch. Uh, what are my options? So you are grappled and restrained. You can try to break the grapple, or um, <clears throat> if you try any attacks, uh, they would be you would be rolling at disadvantage. Huh. All right, I'd, I'd like to try and break the grapple. Okay, so um, I just need you to roll uh, an acrobatics or athletics check to escape. Sure, athletic. <laughs> I 
Don't sing some jerks! <laughs> oh, buddy. <clears throat> Hobby, you, can, have... you can try a second time. Really? Is that my bonus action? Yeah, I'm counting it as like the same way as a grapple, so you can replace one of your attacks with it. <laughs> and since you have Ooh. two, you can try twice. Cool. Let's go, <laughs> Conquer Wars! <laughs> hey, that's a lot better. Uh, and that does beat my nine. Okay. <laughs> Wait, my one would have beaten your nine. <laughs> <laughs> that cool, is so I'm out. The second one. So, uh, you are in the hole, ten feet down, uh, with the snake, but at least you can, you can, uh, yeah, you're, you're free to move. Can I run out of that hole? Uh, you can. Or is it straight <clears> down? You can, you can climb out. It is straight down. Uh, Casimir, unlike you, has an actual climb speed, so he could just like dig his claws into the wall and climb out. But I don't believe you do. No, um, I don't. Which just means um, this is this is dirt. Uh, uh, it would be climbable. It's just going to take twice as much speed as normal. So to climb out a ten foot hole, you'd have to spend twenty feet. All right, I'll do that. Um, when I'm out of the hole, I still have 10 feet, right? Ah, uh, yeah. So you can end up in any of these spots around it. Alright, I will go hopefully land here and then go 10 feet this way. Okay. Uh, it would be leaving its reach as you're like climbing out of the, w of the hole. Oh, well, it gets an attack. Ah, uh, cool. yeah. Is that okay? I mean, you're... yeah. Alright. Uh, that. What the heck? It's another natural one! What's happening? Let's go! <laughs> I'm so upset! <laughs> it doesn't hit. <laughs> Snakes are not <laughs> as scary as they should be! Have them oh. hiss at us. Yeah, That'd they're hissing. They're, they're... Ah! <laughs> uh, but it's not like a natural hiss. It's... Ooh. It's Is louder, it like but it's clearly hiss? artificial. It's a, yes, it's a steamy hiss. There's a little bit of, of uh, steam that comes out of the mouth <clears> That's cool. as it happens. And then number three is the one down here. Uh, let's see. Um, between these, what's a wrong die? Uh, one, two, three. Two, Talix. Okay. How is this possible? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Two minute break. I'm getting different sets of dice. As <laughs> I said, I needed to get. Because this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, There's right all back. snake eyes. All of them. Even the <laughs> 20s. Couldn't have sent snakes after us. Yeah, I mean, frankly, you signed up for this. Okay, I got them. I got them. This is what you get for bamboos <gasps> length under damage. <laughs> 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 it's called karma. Thunder damage worked really good on the last ones. Behold, the wrath of the frog. <laughs> okay. A billion years of bad luck. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, the, the combination of just... <clears throat> Um, Duchess being very uh, quick to move to move out of the way, uh, and Talis ducking uh, means that the, the snake the snake's tail reaches way above them, um, missing the target entirely. Uh, Fortis being restrained. Uh, the best he can do is try to break free. So let's see if what what. Come this on, buddy. Guy let's go. About it. Okay. This is Fortis. This is the snake. Uh, He's snake. Fortis has advantage. Oh, that's true. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, hey, that did it. Yeah. That that made a difference. Holy crap. Um, yeah. Uh, wow. With 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 a distraction provided uh, by by Squeak. Uh, uh, Fortis waits for just the right moment when the snake is looking up and its body is extended a little bit and the uh, its grip on him is a little weaker and he manages to weasel. <laughs> Out of it, just, uh, just barely. Uh, he gets over here. That that took his action. Um, 
Um... That's all they can do. Uh, it's not gonna risk an opportunity attack. So moving on to number one, who's going to... Uh, going to burrow and pop out at this spot and try to attack Tekka. Okay. 14 to hit. Doesn't hit. These dice are not doing that much better. <laughs> okay. Well, Moving on to Pontifex. <laughs> yeah. Pontifex. Uh, question. Um, has Tekka's... Uh, wait, has, has Tekka been hitting them at all? I uh, think it's been a failure every time. <laughs> So, n okay. no. I think uh, no, no actual hit has been happening. No one has bludgeoned these things yet. Uh, Talix has. Talix has. Okay, and it seemed to it seemed to be fine. They didn't... Okay, good. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to cast a Flaming Sphere again, uh, but this time I am changing the damage type to bludgeoning, because I can. You can? <laughs> I think, yeah, because I have it's Maximilian's Earth and Grass, ball. which is bludgeoning damage. <laughs> So I can change it to bludgeoning, uh, and I'm I'm gonna even though it's off of earth and grass, I think I'm gonna flavor it as just a water orb, uh, and it's just gonna be crashing into stuff because water spells tend to do bludgeoning damage. In this so I'm gonna yeah, make a, sure. a water ball, like a big old water balloon, and just fucking crash it into things. <laughs> cool. uh, I'm gonna put it over. Oh, I have a marble. Oh, and marble. it's the right color. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put over there and then smash it into to Snake 3, uh, okay. DC 17 deck save. Hey, deck save! Uh, 14. That is a fail. This is the first time this snake is getting hit. Why? Well, because yeah, I healed last time. <laughs> uh, this one's not as much damage as the... This one's not as many dice. Uh, only four. Noted. <clears throat> you smack the snake with a ball of water. Uh, and then I'm going to... Part of me wants to go after Faroom, and the other part of me wants to like, get away from the other snakes. Uh, this, this snake took an opportunity attack against Tekka. Um, oh! Oh, I totally know, it's been its turn ever since, so now he does have its reaction back. Sorry, I'm not trying Almost to trick you. Almost bamboozled me again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's an action to, to to equip a shield, yeah? Yeah. <coughs> uh, okay, then, okay. Uh, let's just... Uh, I mean, uh, a forum is like booking it at a billion miles an hour, and I'm slow. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'll deal with it later. Uh, I'm going to uh, try to get away from the other. <laughs> I'll deal with him later. <laughs> Yeah. Uh Yeah, I'll get over here. Okay. I'm Pip, farthest away from all got? the other snakes as possible. Alright, so uh Pip takes one of the magic stones in his hand and tosses it in the air, uh in the space like right next to him, and as it's hovering in the air in this space he is going to cast catapult and send it whipping directly this direction. Okay. Um so this one needs to make a dexterity saving throw, and if it fails, then the other one will give it a go. Okay, four. Uh that fails. Alright, so I need to roll a crap ton of d8s. <laughs> oh. Warlock upcasting. What? That's <laughs> 20, 20 points of magical bludgeoning damage. Wow. And, and wow. Uh, Pip, with the remaining rock in his hand, just sort of looks over to Fortis and, and just wiggles it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did he say that the snake in the back also has to do it? 
Uh, no, only if only if this one failed. Or if it if or succeeded. succeeded. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. Because it's dodging anyway. All right. Yeah. Uh, this little pebble uh, just goes right through the machine. It's like a miniature cannonball straight through. You can see the um, the hole uh, that. The, the hole that he made in multiple spots in his body. If it were to coil itself ba- back in exactly the same position, you'd be able to see right through. It's like a bunch of <laughs> slices of Swiss cheese. All right. Uh, okay. Um, what else? So, uh, bonus actions. Uh, <laughs> I trying to think. I don't know if I have a great use for one. So... So I just won't do anything. <laughs> okay. I'll stay put. Alright, let's see... Um, Casimir come around here and flank uh, this snake. Uh, and with the bless and the multi-attack and the advantage, uh, he is going to make a snack out of this snake. I hope these guys <laughs> are not rolling that much better, but it is a hit! Their AC is pretty low. So that's one hit. Ah, uh, that's another hit. And a third attack. Wow. Okay, well... Casimir has just redeemed himself uh, uh, <laughs> uh, by absolutely destroying <laughs> this, <laughs> this snake. Um, uh, yeah, he, he makes his way around running on all fours and then uh, first starts slashing into it with his claws that are able to just rip apart uh, the, the outer shell of this machine. And then he grabs it by the tail and just lifts it up and slams it down behind him. And it's no longer moving. Dang. <laughs> nice. Uh, Tekka. Okay. So Tekka will now attach the new spring attachment that Mina gave him. And uh, yeah, he's going to try to launch himself up into that snake mouth. Let's see, let's see what we can do. <laughs> Tekka really wants to ride the snake. Yes! <laughs> you cannot stop him! <laughs> uh, yeah, so that will be... Uh, one second... Okay, so I gotta pass a DC 15 acrobatics. Let's see what happens. You can do it. Hmm. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Decca. Sid. So the thing is, um. <laughs> yeah, I think the core staff just moves. And Tekka cannot hold on, and That's that course I'm just blasting off into the, I don't know, into the wilderness? Who knows? It's a, it's, it's a pogo stick out of control. He slams it down into the ground, he tried to hold on to it, but he just... Choom! Yep. <laughs> Bye, burns course. your hands a little bit. Uh, but it does, it does go roughly where you're pointing it, and if it hits the snake, it, it, it deals damage. Yeah, but... The- do we roll for that? How does that work? Uh, yeah. What, what did I? What did I give you? Sid, 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 Sid. Um. It just says deals normal damage to any creature that hits, but it doesn't say anything about if it hits or not. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, because it. Uh, uh, it says that as if you use a melee attack. So we roll like against its armor uh, class. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Let's do it. Which does it? Great! <laughs> that at least works. You don't get all hitting things with a staff. <laughs> Six damage. And since it's right in front of you, it would actually drop right at your feet. Handy! Uh, Great. Yeah. Okay, six damage on snake number two. I lost my pen. There it is. 
Uh, okay, and this snake is looking very rough as well. Uh, number three is basically brand new, uh, almost. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you've done a number in the other two. Uh, oh, sorry, anything else for you, Tekka? No. Okay, so number two needs to pass a wisdom saving throw, yeah? Or, or it can fail, you know. Oh. <laughs> uh, 14? Oh, that fails, I think. Uh -huh. oh. Yeah, it does! No. Ah. No. Yeah, it's nothing! <laughs> <laughs> okay, squeak! Uh, okay, um... Squeak. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, squeak will... I can't... Okay, there we go. It's hard to grab him. <laughs> he was under the snake. Um... Squeak is going to turn invisible and fly up over snake number three. Okay. That's it. All right. As for Talix. <sighs> yeah, I think it just makes sense to hit it some more. Hit, yeah, hit number two some more with the walking stick, honestly. <laughs> Ever since Talix had a duel with Brook, he has found this, this <laughs> new... Violent uh, <laughs> urge with yeah, it's weird character development. I was not prepared for this to become a brawler cleric. <laughs> Very peculiar. Okay, uh, bonk. Okay. Yeah, bonk, bonk, we do. Uh, successful bonk. Okay. Which uh, do you say, number three or two? Uh, number two, the one that's already hurt, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. This is. That's. <laughs> A one single damage, but we do the follow up. We do the magic follow up. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. We're gonna make it happen. Uh, maybe not. A thirteen hits. Oh my goodness! These That's are big wonderful. machines. Lots of surface area. Happy the earth. Five damage. Uh, so close. Oh, oh so okay. Close. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and under under Talix's violent blows, uh, this uh, the 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 outer part of this machine is also uh, breaking down. It's dented. Um, uh, Brook, can you finish this? Actually, yeah, you can't reach a snake. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Aha. <laughs> Wait, why not? because uh, you can't really step close enough to it. The horse is in the way. This is not a viable spot. Um, uh, Duchess is a medium creature. She occupies these four squares. Mm -hmm. So, like, big girl. Taken. So well, Talix taken. could take a move action. I oh, guess. It's okay. oh, it's oh yeah, it, it is his turn. turn. Yeah. But hey, if Brooke wants to attack the other one, do that. Yeah, I trust in my team. You get. Rid of snake two. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Hit one dot of one. Number one. Hit? Three twenty hits. Hey. Uh, uh Oh god, not seventy. Nice. 13. Got it. Second head. Still hit. hits. Ooh. 17. Quite some damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, it, the, the first few times you've encountered these machines, it, it took you a while to actually get get a feel for for how to hit them. Uh, the way they move is very unnatural compared to any other actually uh, living creature, monster, animal. Uh, but by now you have built up this experience, and you know exactly what to do. Um, you you get a feel for where its weak points are, uh, weak points are, uh, and you're just using your your mere body strength to like slice down into them and then leverage your weapon upward and opening up these wide gashes into them. Uh, nice. Is that you done? 
Yep, that's me. Okay, moving past the Duchess to Snake number three, uh, which has some targets available. And let's see. Uh, that's Pontifex. <sighs> Woohoo! Does a 19 hit? Uh, Wait, I shouldn't have said the number. I would it. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh. The the, sn the snake twirls around and tries to slam its tail upon you. Uh. And uh, uh, your your magic force field flares in between the two of you and stops the, the mighty blow. I like to call it my debunker. No bonk. Debunky bonk. <laughs> Debunker. It unbonks. Uh, okay. Well, that's that's the snake done. Uh, uh, Austin, what does it take to attack with the pebble? Uh, it uses Pip's uh, spell attack modifiers. So uh, it's but it, plus. Is it, it's an action or bonus? Action. Okay, and it's a ranged attack. It is. Okay, so Fortress will be a disadvantage when doing this, uh, <clears> but he <throat> would love to be uh, away from the snake. Let's just. Ah, oh, he's really hurt, though. Yeah, no, he needs to disengage. He needs to disengage and just be not here. Uh, he'll he'll throw the pebble at a later turn, but uh, he's not doing well right now. There won't be a later turn. <laughs> oh, that's, that's true, because this snake is down and we're moving on to Pontifex. Uh, first things first. Uh, water smash into, uh, into snake three. Mm-hmm. What is uh, that? So uh, oh, wait. Uh, uh, did Snake 3. Um, it didn't move, so it ended its turn. So it needs to make a save uh, again. Oh, you were correct. Uh, so it'll. This okay. will do this first one for ending its turn, okay. and then my bonus action is smash it again. The first one is a nat 1, so it's a fail. <laughs> okay. Do you have a nat 1 and nat 20 counter? I <laughs> I need to I need to get myself my own nat one counter. Uh, what's the damage on the first one? Uh, it, this mat. Uh, ooh, pretty good roll. Eight. Oh, that is pretty good. Uh, pretty good for you, not for me. Oh, also, uh, <laughs> the uh, second one. I forgot about this. Uh, Snake two needs to make it as well. Oh, you're right. This within range. <laughs> I, okay. I should have been better about this. Snake, and no, that's, that's that's fine. Um. Okay, Snake 2, it's a deck save, you said? Yeah. Okay, I have an 18 on Snake 2, and then I have a 9 on Snake 3 on the second one. Okay. So Snake 2, I still well, think it's half on Snake 2. Uh, let me double... Uh, it is half on success, so this is one on Snake 2. Okay. Uh, so 8 halved to 4. Ooh, alright. I'm so and glad. Then, this is Snake <laughs> 3 on its second failure, uh, which is 6. They're both so close! <laughs> uh, good. <laughs> ah, Alright, there they are. They're falling apart under the, the heavy blows of this compressed uh, water sphere. It's like a block of ice in a way. It's just slamming into them. Uh, and then let's try... Do I have any AoE stuff? I don't think I do. Blaster wizard with no blaster stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, let's try Toll the Dead. Why not? Uh, I'm going to Toll the Dead on... Uh, let's do Snake 2, the one that's over yonder. Mm -hmm. uh, so he needs to make a wisdom save. Uh, DC 17. Wisdom uh, 13. Uh, okay, and this is, uh, it's already, so 2d12 necro. Hmm. Uh, 10 points uh, of necrotic damage. Necrotic, 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 necrotic. Huh. It's not resistant. Nice. <laughs> what does that look like, Winther? What does that look like? Because uh, Pontifex, you're killing it, so it's... Uh, it's... What kind of metal are these things? Are they gold or something? 
heavy. Oh, what kind of metal is this? Like, I mean, it doesn't uh, have to be specific, but like I'm thinking, like when I think of necrotic damage, I think of like it tin. withers things. So maybe it like, just kind of rapidly like corrodes it, like not acid, but more like age, like it rusts it or something. Parts in there start to seize up, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just go for it. It looks like they are. Uh, it is rusting up before your eyes. Um, sort of like just really quick accelerated oxidi- oxidiz- o- Yeah, Freak. that word. Yeah. Oxidization, huh? I think. Uh, <laughs> that is it. Uh, as the, the snake that has struggled to move in the first place uh, stops moving entirely. It's almost uh-huh, like it freezes behold the power up. of the goat. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it freezes up in the position it's in. Almost looks like a statue. <laughs> okay, is that uh, everything from you? And then I'm going to uh, move over here to try to give Brooke some flanking. Okay. Pip. With the uh, last magic stone Pip has in his hand, he glances over to Fortis first, holds it up, and gestures to it wildly with his palm, <laughs> and then chucks it towards the snake. Okay. Is that an attack roll? Yes. That hits. Alright. And this is improved. Mm -hmm. I rolled 2d6 for this. Oh, kind of (laughs) crap. No, that's that's sufficient. Oh! How would you like to do this? Um, so I I want it to, uh, with the mechanical snake body that's sort of collapsed in front of Pip. Um, the other one made like a big hole in it, right? Uh-huh. So I want Pip to sort of like chuck it through that that hole that it already made, causing this whistling sound as it moves through and hits the other one on its head, uh, knocking it out cold like Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> okay! All right, yeah, and and with Pip's pebble uh, digging right through the head of the snake, um, and it falling back right between uh, Brook and Pontifex, uh, all three of them are no longer moving. We uh, sorry. Go ahead. You guys do with this, and he's going to (laughs) sprint off after Faroom. (laughs) 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 And drop concentration on the wall. (laughs) I'm sure what you have to say is very riveting, but I have a poem to kill. (laughs) (laughs) Squeak flies back over to Pip's shoulder and uh, morphs back into a rat as uh, Pip begins collecting his pebbles. Mm -hmm. Or just cautiously approaching a little bit. And uh, the last one he needs to gather is from Fortis, so he walks up and... um, This time, making no effort to hide Squeak, um, through Squeak comes Pip's voice uh, towards Fortis, as uh, Pip says, I'll take that pebble back. Fortis is giving you the pebble back like it's a hot potato. Um... (laughs) He, 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 he seems to understand how powerful these things are, and he's not excited to be holding one. Everyone underestimates rocks, what can I tell you? <laughs> That's why I collect them. Uh, he, like, uh, awkwardly points at you, and then at Squeak, and then back at you, and says, but, So that you're... you're What, how, what's going on? How about I... How about I tell you about it tonight? Uh... Yeah, okay. Um... But then he, like, waves awkwardly and says, It's nice to meet you. At, the uh, at Squeak. Hey, I'm Squeak. Squeak Ashtorax, uh, Junior, but Squeak for short. Hi, Squeak. I'm a devil, not a demon. So, just keep that in mind. Um, 
Okay, yeah, I, w I, w I will remember that. And then as he leans towards Pip, like on the other side of... Uh, on the other shoulder compared to where Squeak is, he'll say, What's the difference? <laughs> um... I... I don't know. Do they both live in the beach, Squeak? Or the ocean? Do they? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're asking me! Yeah, I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, that is a, um, huh. <laughs> Let's just say the Squeak would get, like, a little mad about a question in the first place and, like, just go on a rant at the end of which it's not clear what the <laughs> okay. answer is. Best not to ask. What, what are Brooke and Tekka and Talix doing? We should probably check these things for <clears throat> the initials, right? <clears throat> Okay. And Brooke goes to one of the machines and checks it. Yeah, this this thing is big. Um, so you, you you need the help of your friends uh, to like just gather around it and try to flip the snake over. These these are not they didn't die like actual snakes where they flip over on on their back belly up. So you have to turn them around uh, to, to try to see where uh, if if the initials are there. It's a, it's a bit of a group effort, Casimir, as a big werewolf comes over and with his assistance it, it makes things a lot easier. And as you flip over um, uh, this one, whoa, <laughs> as you <laughs> flip this one over um, and you're looking for the initials, you find them, um, Casimir is silently uh, tapping with a claw over them, O-T-H, and as he does, um, beneath his claw, the, the metal, the scales that the initials are written on, uh, it, it cracks open. And uh, he, he pulls back his hand. It, 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 he didn't look like he had applied that much strength um, <laughs> on his tapping, but the, uh, the, uh, the metal uh, uh, cracked open a little bit. And the crack grows a little bigger and a little wider and begins to expand all the way down from the snake's body uh, until its entire outer shell collapses down on the ground and a smaller version of the same machine comes out shedding what? its old skin <laughs> uh, the other snakes similarly from their from their bodies a smaller version of themselves comes out and attacks you oh, so we're going back in initiative <laughs> <laughs> matryoshka snakes <laughs> how uh <laughs> How far along did Potifex get to wrangling up for room? What? That's the wrong idea. Um, you are currently... You got the horse, but you are like a hundred okay. feet away. So okay. this is snake number three. How, how far does it go? <laughs> <laughs> Snakes all the way it down. Just, it like catapults its old skin into orbit. Go. Let's see if I ever refresh. Eh. One, two, three. That looks about right. Uh, and they occupy these spaces. There we go. Uh, so beginning with uh, uh, one of them, the one that like nobody was around and so no, no one really saw uh, the, this process of shedding its old skin uh, uh, take it, taking place and it's the first one to sneak up on, <laughs> it's going to be Tekka. Oh, it comes over here. Uh, and this one's a little smaller, they look a little uh, even uh, slightly uh, faster. Uh, it hisses and, and comes over towards Tekka, and Tekka, uh, that is a 21 to hit! That it? Woo, okay. Uh, oh, they don't sorry, look... did not put me in for room and initiative because we aren't on the grid. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, put, put yourself here. Uh, and I will... Yeah, there you are. There we go. Um... 
So these snakes are a little too small to be able to wrap themselves around you guys. Uh, but they are still pretty damn big. And uh, Teki, you just feel something, a cold metal clamping around one of your legs as the snake, uh, uh, the, the mechanical snake bites you uh, for 11 piercing damage. Okay. Um, yeah, Kazimir surprised at first, but then he just springs into action. Uh, and he's going to... Actually, he has enough movement to get all the way back here. Um, somehow he's... I forget sometimes that he is high intelligence. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's try to attack this snake. That is a hit. Uh, I'm counting as uh, about 30 seconds having passed uh, um, in between the two fights. So 30 seconds minus uh, uh, four rounds... Uh, yeah, because this is round five. Uh, so, Bless so would be around for another four. one round? Yeah, this round and the next one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hit. Miss. And hit. And look at that! And it's already making a difference. Oh, wait, Bless. He actually hits because he's too blessed. Haha! <laughs> We're just talking about it. So, this much damage plus this much damage. Number three. Got it. Um, yeah, Ka uh, Kazimir, almost without missing a beat, just leaps back into action and starts uh, ripping uh, this snake apart. Tekka, it's your turn. Okay, yeah. Uh, Tekka will definitely. Uh, yeah, probably has to pick up the quarter stuff again from now on. And just immediately will strike at this snake as it's bitten his leg. Okay. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Smash the metal. Smash the metal. That's Whoa. a natural. There you go. That's the Sid we all know and love. <laughs> I mean, we love you regardless. Uh, so do I roll twice? How does the uh, Yeah, twice the number of uh, dice in your normally would. Okay, cool. Uh, uh. That's nine damage, and then I'm gonna roll the second attack for the attack action. That's 14. 14 hits. Alright. Uh. Nine, <laughs> and then uh, two unarmed strikes. That is, let's see. That probably hits as well, I can imagine. That hits, yes. Okay, and this is the first little punch. <laughs> nine, nine, nine. And then another, uh, leave this, right? Yep. That one probably oh, doesn't hit. Eight misses. Yeah. Wow. And you have single-handedly done quite a number on this machine. I will a bit him. It's gonna get some payback. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh. Uh, and that's the turn. Okay. Uh, uh, Pontifex is riding the horse, yeah? Uh, yeah. So, uh, we'll actually... They will move on to Pontifex's turn. Okay. Meaning we move on to Squeak. Hey, uh, question one. Uh, this creature, is it no longer cursed? Like, it's technically a new entity? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, Squeak is going to cut his monologuing short about the <laughs> differences between fiends and devils. Or, yeah, it's uh, so devils much and more demons. to say. Uh, and is going to say, uh, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Turns back into uh, an imp and is going to fly over onto this one. That's it. Okay. Talix? Um, yeah. What's the best cause of action? You know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to cast. Uh, one of those fancy uh, prayer of healing. That's his prayer, right? Because Ford is probably needs it, like 
really bad over this time, I imagine. Um, uh, or no? Brave of Healing or... takes 10 minutes to cast. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay, yes, and the other is just touch. Okay, yeah, that's the difference. Okay. Good to know. Uh... Yeah, I can't really think of a lot right now, so I'm just gonna word of radiance the snake number two. That's a constitution saving throw. Uh... Oh wait, okay, hold on. Um... So it says five feet, so do you, does he have to move um... one closer? Or technically occupies these four squares right now. I'm just gonna give you like both of them as potential yeah. targets. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so each creature, so it's both of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very great. Uh yeah, constitution save throw. Okay, con saves from both of them. Um number number two has rolled a sixteen. Succeeds? And this one has a four. The three will take some damage. Let's see how much. Three damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think... Hmm, I want to risk a lot of opportunity attacks. I'm just going <laughs> to... Yeah, that's just going to be it for now. Alright, moving on to Baruch. Alright. <clears throat> I will continue my attacks. On the smaller spider. Snake? Oh yeah, snake. <laughs> ah, you also roll an advantage if you'd like to try to go for a crit. Yeah, of course. You and your buddy are flanking. Well, oh. all right. <laughs> 21 oh. hits. <laughs> well, oh. Um, yeah, let's a crit. 11. This 11. is three things of magical, I think. Uh, oh, wait. I have to roll to hit a second time, right? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> but with advantage. Oops. Well, well. There, there's a crit. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. If I just uh, do the damage times two, right? Uh, roll it rolled twice the, the number of dice. Oh, cool. Alright, we'll take those. Yeah! Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? It's some damage! Well, yeah, you and Casimir have <laughs> made short work of the snake right before its turn! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Is that the most in one hit so far? Or, no, wait, we did that weird electric move against Sesquire. Yeah, Never mind. yeah, that was a lot. Wow. Damn. Ah, well, Damn, nice. There, there goes the snake. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't shut again. Uh, yeah, keep stabbing uh, it. Oh, <laughs> and stay down. <laughs> um, are, you, are you moving? Are you doing something else? Right? Yeah. Yeah, we're not. Let's see how far I can go. Is this still a hole? Um, One second. Eat the... Um, Actually, it would have. Let me have the snake be over here. All right, then. Um, oh, God. Sure, I'll go here. Okay. Number three is down. Duchess Fortis. Uh, Fortis so Pip is holding out the last remaining magic stone back to him. <laughs> in case he wants it. to use it. Yeah. Uh, he saw what he can <laughs> do. Uh, he's going to try to toss it as the closest snake, which is number two. Uh, he gets a 7 plus 7 to hit, okay. and if it does hit, it's 2d6 plus 4. <laughs> the, the curse of miss? that once <laughs> no. coming back on the new dice. Fortis! Uh, <laughs> he was just so afraid of this miniature death pellet that you gave him. Uh, he, he throws it and just goes, yeah, way off. Uh, it's... Pip worries that he may never Sorry, find it room. again. <laughs> in the back, way in the back, you hear Pontifex going, Ow! <laughs> uh, and then Fortis backs away. He tried. Okay, Snake number two, still alive. In fact, uninjured. 
Uh, plenty Three of more. targets. It's what do we do? What do we turns. do? What do we do? <laughs> hey, it's <laughs> I don't know why I sounded happy. I'm not happy about it. Um, <laughs> does a 17 hit? It's right on. Oh, nailed it. Okay. Um, so the snake bites Talix. Four, uh, this much plus this much damage, uh, which is eight. Eight piercing. Alrighty. Uh, Pontifex, you hear some commotion. You just got them back on the saddle. Oh hell! Uh, he's gonna uh, he's gonna use an action to. Uh, uh, no, he's not. Uh, first, we're gonna approach with the horse. Uh, move and dash with the horse, I guess. So, mm -hmm. uh, 120 I feet. Yeah, I said you were 100 feet, so you can easily get to 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 the group and have a tiny bit of extra movement as well. Okay. Uh, and uh, you can see the the old skin so the, that the snakes have shed, and the smaller um, machines that are, that have come out of them, and uh, one one of them already being down, uh, but the others are in the middle of fighting your group. Oh jeez, uh, uh, I don't. The others haven't been injured, right? Uh, one of them is the number one. Number one. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I guess if you sing Brooke fighting that one, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try to goat that one. <laughs> goat uh, it. So DC 17 wisdom save. 11. So it's gonna do this much. Uh, 11 <laughs> goat I damage. It. Ooh. All right. Yeah. You, you can you can tell from the smaller size of these things they're not uh, going to be as resilient as their bigger counterparts. It's sort of like they have shed their 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 outer uh, uh, armor. Um, uh, and yeah, it's it's already looking pretty rough for this for this snake over here. Oh. Very rough. Uh, I think that is. Uh uh, no, I can, uh, I'm gonna cast Healing Word, uh, at second level, and I'm gonna hit, uh, uh let's do, uh, let's do Brook and Tekka. Uh, I think a casting healing ward just gives you more healing, not more targets. Oh, you're right. Sorry, I'm thinking of my other character where I twin it constantly. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> then I'll just I'll just do it at first level. Uh, we'll do it at Tekka. <laughs> Sorry, other game. <laughs> Wrong game. Okay, Tekka, you heal. Oh, <laughs> dang <laughs> it. Uh, five. We get to the bottom, and it's just a worm in a mech suit. <laughs> well, this means one of you is getting flanked and also doesn't have a shield. <laughs> has lower hit dice. The list goes on. But that person doesn't injure himself. Uh, true, yeah. true, 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 true. You're not also the cause of your own problems. Yeah. Uh, Pip is going to reach down in his pouch, pull out three more stones, cast Improved Magic Stone again, and is, uh, is sort of seeing this snake sway in front of him is going to start backing up. Okay. It can make an, an, an AOA. It can take a bite. <clears throat> That's what it can do. Ah, uh, aha, 23 to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, yeah, different side block, that's correct. And it's like, it doesn't look as high as it should be, but it's... Ah, <laughs> uh, 12 piercing damage for Pip. Ouch! Okay. Pip has bad memories of snake bites in recent history. <laughs> uh... <laughs> So he, he backs away, sort of painfully gripping at his his wherever it hit, uh, <laughs> and your shoulder. Uh, no, <laughs> right where the other one bit. <laughs> yep. And uh, he's going to chuck one of the magic stones at the snake. 
Okay. All right. So that's this and that. So that's I'm blessed. Ooh. 24 hits. All right. That's going to be. Wait, when did that that much? Ah, uh, okay. Well, number two, yeah. Yes. I thought the first time number two has been hit. Um, Pip's just gonna keep backing up a little bit, so okay. he's right about there. Did Talis get hit on this round? I think so. We should have rolled a concentration check on Bless when it happened. Oh yeah. Uh, let's get that. Let's get it done just <laughs> right now. Sid, are you there? Uh, oh, Sid, you're muted. Oh my god, I was muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so what, what do I roll? Is it's, it... a, it's a constitution saving throw. Got it. Okay. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> Wait, who do we give the nat one to? Hmm. <laughs> We put another counter right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sid's, Sid's, Sid's. Sid yeah, I agree. Um, the blast wouldn't have mattered on Pip's hit, on Pip's uh, hit just now. Um, yeah, let's just let's just move on from here. Uh, so that oh. was a hit on the snake that worked. Uh, everyone's nice. bless is gone. And is that everything from Pip? That's it. Okay, snake number one. Not doing so hot. Um, who is he attacking? Uh, oh, you can reach, you can reach any of them. Uh, one, two, three, two! Tekka! Uh-huh. Oh, and they're flanking! Well, mm -hmm. well, well. When am I getting a, a, a nat 20, though? I want a nat 20. <laughs> uh, that is also a 23 to hit. Hey, oh, get that hit. Number. Okay, Tekka. That is... 11 piercing damage uh, and so, oh. as the snake bites down on one of your on your left leg and pulls your fo uh, forward a little bit stop um. chopping legs <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're too fast try and stop you're just you. so exposed we need it to get ankles pants. let's move on to <laughs> Kazimir. those succulent ankles oh no we need to get you some pants and some closed toe shoes <laughs> Kazimir uh, um, misses with advantage somehow. There we go. That's a hit. Let me go ahead and roll the damage because I play. I don't need to roll. Uh, no, I do need to roll. This one has just <laughs> been hurt just now. It's the other one that's almost dead. Uh, I lost my pen somehow. Where is it? There it is. This much. And another attack roll. Just a hit. For, whoop, that much. Okay. Taika! Uh, you're not doing so hot. No, but we're gonna keep on attacking and slapping snake number two. See okay. how it goes. Behind you hear the uh, the raging fight between a snake and a wolf. While ahead of you, you put your weight on, on, on you accidentally put your weight on the leg that you that just got bitten, and your blow goes wide. Yeah, that's fair. Honestly, uh, you try again. You reposition yourself. You properly balance on the other leg, and this time, bonk! That's a hit. Very nice. All right, here we go. That is eight damage, okay. and, and then that, that will destroy it. Oh, all right. Uh, can take a switch targets, or is that not allowed? How's that? Do you have more attacks? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yes, yeah, for just a punch for good measure, I guess. Let's see here. Cause we can. not 
15 hits. Mm -hmm. And that is... Not gonna be a lot, but... Every little thing counts. Four damage. Every this little day. bit does count. Mm -hmm. And there that's end of turn. Four uh, points of damage. Uh, room squeak. I would bite you if I could, but Pip has to tell me to. So I'm just gonna <laughs> let someone else kill you, alright? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Where is Squeak on the map? He is, he is on the snake. <laughs> Ah, ah, that's what I was seeing down here. That's <laughs> squeak. <laughs> okay, Talix. Yeah, as, as we usually do in a hike, you, you slam a few snakes with your walking stick. So, uh, that doesn't hit. Oh no! <laughs> but, but, we can do a bonus action. <laughs> Hopefully that second one will hit. So, how are you doing this bonus action? As it's the shillalog, I don't know how to ah. pronounce that, but the bonus action. Okay, yeah. But, uh, that one, you just cast it once. And then whenever you attack, uh, you use the wizard modifier instead of a normal attack. Oh, so it's not two strike. Okay, uh, I read right. that completely wrong. Okay, yeah, well... You're fine. You've, you never played the cleric before. Never played, but that's true. Okay, yeah, the, the, I guess there's not much else to do. Uh, yeah, I'm probably just gonna call it then. Um, what would have the blow been if it had been with wisdom? Uh, great question. I don't think it would have mattered. So it's I don't plus think three. Well, uh, there are armor classes lower. Okay, no, it wouldn't have hit anyway. Okay, uh, Talix yep, is getting so, uh, tired. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. A lot of hitting with the stick. For yeah, he, d he doesn't have the, the kind of uh, like he, he's he's very resilient on like hikes, but uh, fights are not his <laughs> thing. Uh, Brooke, uh, talking about fights being someone's thing, they are your thing. Go ahead and do your yeah. thing. Can I walk over this? Yes. Was falling into the hole? Yeah, mm. uh, that would like take you. An extra five feet of movement to get over here, so this is actually 20. Okay. But you're fine, yeah. Okay. okay. We'll take him twice. Do I get advantage again? Uh, yeah. Cool. Oh, actually, I think you have to be exactly opposite uh, for that to happen. Like, Kazumi would have to be over here. Is oh. That, is that. Is that. Uh, do I have it that right? Is, that is correct flanking rules. Okay, we are, right. let's do correct flanking rules. You only get so many advantages and 10 misses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Second attack. Huh? Oh, 14 hits. Huh? Okay. 15 damage. Okay, 15 on number two. Where are we at? Where are we at? Oh, how would you like to do it this, Brooke? Hey! Hey! If there are already some holes in the scale, then hit inside that and then slash upwards, ripping off the other scales. Yeah, just shave the snake. Yeah, skin it. Skin it! Okay, I'm just revealing a squeak underneath. <laughs> I did it! <laughs> 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 Ooh. <laughs> okay. Squeak just squeak Good just job. keeps like piercing the body of it with his stinger over and over again. Just like, are there any more? Are we done? <laughs> eh? Okay. Um, uh, Squeak keeps uh, just like he has made. The, he's using the one hole the brook made, uh, <laughs> and he's like almost digging his way inside of the snake just to find. Another snake, uh, smaller, but in, they on the always inside. come in threes. <laughs> <laughs> and as as Squeak makes makes this uh, this uh, uh, yeah, a discovery that absolutely nobody saw coming, uh, he's looking down into this hole, seeing another smaller uh, snake, um, Im immobile at first, and then beginning to move and wiggle, and then it opens its mouth, and I need Squeak to roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh, son of a... 
Alright. Uh, da, 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 da. What is Squeak's dexterity? I think it's three. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, 18, 18 succeeds. Okay. Uh, Squeak is going to take half of this. So, two. Lightning damage as Ooh, lightning, lightning shoots damage. as lightning shoots out of the the remains of the snake, and uh, we're going to stay right in initiative. Uh, uh, Pip's going to use his reaction to give Squeak resistance to that, so he takes one. <laughs> he takes one. Oh. <laughs> okay, this is number three. This is number. Two. No! <laughs> Did I get <kidnap> that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't get I've him off. Sucked into oblivion. I can't get him off. There we go. <laughs> I don't want to go back to the beach yet. Slap the No! Oh, Johnny boy, the beach is calling. <laughs> <laughs> Going down like the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also need uh, Casimir, which I will handle. Um, no, not, not Casimir. Sorry, I'm wrong. Um, Tekka and Talix and Duchess, who also rolled dexterity saves. Got it. And we'll resume initiative right away. <laughs> we'll resume better. the rock. <laughs> oh, why am I rolling d20s? Oh yeah, uh, no, wait, no, I'm not rolling d20s. You guys, uh, it's all, it's all Sid who's rolling. Mm -hmm. No, okay. working on it. So that was for Tekka. That was Tekka. Uh, Tekka fails. Mm -hmm. That was for Talix. Talix fails. I don't know. I, I don't know what modifier Duchess has, so. Uh, Duchess, the horse, uh, 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 Matt, do we have the, the horse stats? Ma Matt? Sorry, yeah. what? Do you have the riding horse stats open right now? Uh, yeah, I have the horse. What's the dexterity uh, modifier? The dex horse is uh, plus zero, it's just a 10. Okay. Everyone fails! All right. Okay, so uh, Tekka uh -huh. will take nine lightning damage, and both Talix and Duchess uh, will take eight. Ah, Tekka! <laughs> hey. What happened? Lightning! It hurts. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I see when when, this, when these snakes emerge from their old uh, from their old skin, um, they do so in a burst of electricity. Uh, you can it almost looks like lightning just struck in these three different spots. Uh, uh, let's see if initiative works correctly. Okay, it does. It's updated. We're moving on to ooh, snake number two over here. Um, let's see. Think, 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 think. I will end you. <laughs> okay, the snake tries to bite uh, <laughs> to bite squeak. <laughs> no, I need to roll for it. I've been rolling for it this whole time. So I have one, two, three possible targets. Oh, it's squeak! Aha! Destiny! Destiny! Oh, not one! <laughs> why, why did I think I'd, I'd get to like, have some fun with these bites? Okay. Uh, Duchess goes with uh, Talix. Fortis can just resume shooting things with his bow. What is happening to me today? How? Is it another one? I'm pretty sure this is like <laughs> impossible. Like, Are you serious? <sighs> You've rolled like seven or eight rolled. ones today. That, that sounds about right. At least they've been on both sides. You see, gang, the trick to never rolling that ones is to only do saving throws and just make the DM roll all of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trick, is just uh, never roll an attack roll. Alright, pawn defects. It's your turn. Show us how it's done. Yeah. Speaking up. Right, speaking up. 
Uh, yeah, the 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 one that just got um, brooked. I'm gonna go to him. Uh, is well, brook a verb? It, it, it is it's now. Num- brook brooked <laughs> both of them earlier. I'm pretty sure. Uh, then we'll then we'll brook the. Uh, let's do the snake one. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> the one that's not flight. Uh, okay. DC it's 17 wisdom save. Oh, is it going to be a one? It's a ten. There's still a one in it. <laughs> that's still not a. <laughs> Road. Waste away. <laughs> seven, seven points of necrotic. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, the the brand new metal that is that is undented, untouched, uncorroded begins to corrode. It's rusting away. Perfect. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Then uh, Barum is going to move. Uh, here. Okay. You have to get around the horse a little bit, but you have plenty of movement. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna go there and just, just to just to try to goad this thing uh, a little bit, uh, and then I guess Furum will take the uh, dodge action? Sure. I guess. Can horses fight? <laughs> it didn't matter to me. Can't horses they have Fight. a yeah. They have actions. They have attacks. Yeah, he's a hoof attack. Yeah, what am I doing? Yeah, Rumor, he's, he's he's a badass now. Uh, N- now that these snakes are way smaller. Yeah, we'll we'll make for him actually go over here then. Uh, just to get around this hole. Uh, yeah, let's hoof it. Hoof okay. the snake. Uh, uh, at advantage. Oh, because I'm flanking the horse is <laughs> flanking with <attack. laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Uh, what is the horse's attack? Plus five. Uh, that's pretty good. 23 uh, hits. Damn it. Pretty good. Act- horses hit hard. Horses don't fuck around. Oh, oh yeah? Horses don't fuck <laughs> <Wow>. around. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum damage. Max damage. Dang, Farum! <laughs> Damn, Farum! <laughs> My guy! <laughs> he came out to play! <laughs> he, were, he was real scared of the big snakes, but the little ones? The little ones, ah. yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> okay! Wow. At the end of. Uh, oh, sorry, is that, the, is that your turn? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay! <laughs> oh, it's still alive! <laughs> well. yeah, it's, still, it's still alive. <laughs> okay. Although, like, yeah, that's it. You can see that like the damage it's taken so far from just two blows from just your spell and the and the horse's hooves, it's already enough to like start uh, uh, just dismantling the whole thing. Um, however, at the end of your turn, uh, the snakes are going to take a legendary action. Uh, what? Each of them <laughs> get a free bite uh, right away on somebody within reach. Uh, let's go nice. in order. So uh, number one, let's go for uh, uh, let's go for Pontifex slash the horse. Does did you buy a special saddle? Uh, I did. I did. You're right. I have uh, I have a, a, a special saddle. Which means uh, that attacking the, the horse would be a disadvantage, right? Uh, no, 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 no. That's a that's a feat. Um. The oh, saddle no. just gives me advantage on the checks to, to remain mounted. The That's whole thing, true. like if the horse goes prone or if something moves it, I have to make a save. Oh uh, yeah, and like you, you had advantage last time and you still failed it. I remember. Also, I moved you because you're combined yeah. technically. Yeah, uh, two budget square. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I'm just going to uh, roll to decide on the target. I have four different ones. Uh, one, two, three, four. Three, Brook. To flank what I have. Been- uh. Over here to flank with uh, Yeah, yeah, that works. Okay, okay. <coughs> oh no. That's a 14 to hit. Nope. <sighs> okay. Uh, number two, <laughs> I have one, two, Brook Tekka. That is Tekka. Uh huh. No. Um, that is. Woohoo! That is a 21 to hit. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh get, get wrecked. 
Directly <laughs> wrecked. Wait, uh, that's not maximum wreckage. Uh, <laughs> that is six points. Wow! <laughs> Perfect amount. Yes. <laughs> okay, joy. Um, <laughs> look, I haven't I haven't DM'd with you guys in a while. I just have this bloodlust that needs to be quenched. That's uh, fair. And That's those fair. of you who have vision on Tekka, which is like the majority of you, maybe it's just Alex who's facing away right now uh, from that particular snake and from Tekka, mm. uh, would see uh, the snakes... Um, the, the snake bites down on, on one of uh, Tekka's arms and pulls him down until he's down on the ground. Uh, and right as Tekka's consciousness begins to fade, uh, the snake bites him again, right on no! the neck. As for the number three, um, that is a 15 to hit Talix. Wait, I haven't chosen between Talix and the horse. Hold on. Hey, this Talix. <laughs> uh, yeah, 15 does not hit. Okay, well, it was, it was one attack out of three. It's okay. <laughs> Pip, it's your turn. Ah! <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Pip is going to move further up this way. Hand one of the rocks to Fortis. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he takes and, it. Uh, he's going to cast Hex on Mechanical Snake number one. Mm-hmm. And then... I appreciate uh, you said, like, it's full name. <laughs> you know. Mechanical snake number one. You are in trouble. <laughs> uh, Pip will take out his slingshot and shoot a magic stone at it. Mm-hmm. Eh. Eh. Yeah. Uh, 24 hits. They're a little smaller, which makes them a little harder to hit, but um, uh, you still land. <laughs> ah! Those were D6s! <laughs> <laughs> All three of them? Yes! What? Uh, uh, eight points. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's still solid damage. You still hit it, and the pebble goes through it and makes a hole and comes out on the other side and then ends up in, in the hole behind it. Uh, uh, anything else? Yeah. Seeing Tekka, Pip's just going to start running over that way. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Uh, snake number one gets to go again. Um, alright. That leaves me with three possible targets. That is going to be <laughs> Pontifex's horse. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Harum, you're such a badass. No, not you. Oh, 23 to hit. <laughs> uh, just barely. <laughs> why, why am I hitting the horse? That's 10 points of piercing damage. 10. 10, is the horse okay? Yeah, he's, he's fine. Harum oh, is goodness. fine. Wow. Thank goodness the horse is okay. Yes, die, Tekka, die! <laughs> I don't have a grudge against the horse. I don't have a grudge against the Tekka either. Uh. Okay. Ah, uh, I wonder who is left. <laughs> Snake number three. <laughs> uh, gets to pick also between the horse and its rider, and it is Talix. Ah, uh, sneaky, sneaky, sneaky bite! Oh, Ten to hit. Ah, uh, uh, and then Casimir. Ah, uh, he moves forward. I think he's. Chances are that he's going to eat this snake. Let's see. Ah, uh, first attack. No, bad it's Casimir, spit it out. <laughs> what do you have in your mouth? Spit it! <laughs> Drop Spit it! it. <laughs> Drop it! <laughs> <laughs> okay. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This combat has been long enough that my markers are running out of ink. My dry erase markers. Uh, oh! 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 And not 20! And not 20! It's happened! Oh, I got one! Joy! Okay, 
Uh, I'm happy for much. you that you finally Thank got your net you. 20 and that it was from Casimir. Yeah, look, <laughs> the snake is actually dead from it. <laughs> is it this much? Oh, no, it's not. I can do math. It's not dead, but almost. Uh, it, da, 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 uh, da, da. The squeak is just like dodging all of these attacks. <laughs> <coming>. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <yeah. laughs> Get him, what is that? <laughs> 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 what are you doing? Stop it! Massive claws. <laughs> Almost. Uh, uh, he he does get slapped out of the way one time. Ow. Uh, uh, Tekka. Nothing. Yeah. Squeak, it's your turn. Okay. Um. Squeak. Is there any way Squeak can? Like, distract this snake in some way to keep it away from Tekka. <laughs> That's really what Squeak wants to do. Um, I don't know if there's a term for that. <laughs> like, grapple it and pull it away? Yeah, um, grappling isn't a strong suit, but... <laughs> it's probably... It's actually too big for, for Squeak to grapple. Um, probably. Medium, small. He's tiny, right? Yep. Oh, really okay. just I wants to take creature. its attentions away uh, from tech. Alright, so it it can basically be one of its available targets. Right now it's biting on Farum. Um mm. Okay, so increase the odds that yeah, it doesn't it's got five targets. Tech. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Talix. Okay. Um so I'm thinking that could Talix like put Tekka up on Duchess? Would that be an option? Oof. Ah, uh, he'd have to climb down from the yeah, horse. That requires a lot of work, yeah I know. It's possible know. actually, yeah, because it's only it's only a half his movement to actually dismount. Uh, grappling generally is an action and it can yeah, that if it, it can use his entire round to do so. Yeah, I don't know if it's a good idea, but it feels, like, appropriate for what's happening. Sure so, thing. But let's do that. Unconscious Tekka is on Duchess. Isn't there a snake in his neck? Uh, the snake bit his neck, but then he turned around and started attacking the horse. Okay. So, no, it's it's not a pip situation. Ow. Uh, that would be the entirety of... Uh, actually, does Alex have any bonus actions? I couldn't find any more bonus actions, but... Uh, he has Healing Word, doesn't he? He is not prepared today. Uh oh Okay. So, yeah, probably end of turn. Brook. You're flanked. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, no, it's, it's not dead yet. Oh, I thought you said it oh. was. Sorry. Uh, I I did. I said it was, and then I corrected myself because I did math uh, appropriately, oh. and it's like <coughs> almost <coughs> dead. I know how to add up really simple, really small amounts of numbers on the second try. All right, first hit is on the mechanical snake number two. Mm -hmm. Which I'm is an advantage because of flanking. Oh. 15. Wow. 15 misses. Oh. <gasps> well. Uh, with, uh, uh, as they as they becoming smaller and smaller, they've been getting a little harder to hit. They're just a little bit faster. Uh, and, and this oh. one... <laughs> this <laughs> just at the edge of it. Just at the edge of its armor class. So there was, yeah, there was, that swipe was just a little bit too, too high up. Yeah. All right, guess the second hit goes to snake number two as well. Hopefully it hits. That is. Hey. And for okay. this one, it's it's uh, impossible for you to not kill it. It's going to go down. Yep. That That's is the down. dead mechanical snake. This All right, time. I'm just just going to turn that and that ends my turn. <laughs> he just points it at your next. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Intimidation stare. Uh, mm. Duchess can now act independently. 
Yeah, but running would provoke an opportunity attack, right? That's true. Uh, mm -hmm. She can disengage. But she can disengage. Yep. Yeah, the, let's do that. Sure, let's do that. Oh, 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 that's a chess! <laughs> that <laughs> that that <laughs> she triple front flips out of, out of harm's way. <laughs> uh, just uh, so yeah, could it work here? Huh? Would that work? Or yeah, she can, she can move. She has 60 feet of movement. Cool. Oh, yeah. Then let's go. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> oh, and yeah, Talek's just like, uh, <clears throat> slaps her lightly and she takes off with Tekka's body uh, pre pre precariously balanced uh, on her back. Okay, Fortis um, just repositions himself and is going to try to shoot the snake. Oh, the stone! <laughs> Oh, he has, he has another stone? The stone! He has yeah. another stone? <laughs> he doesn't have to use it. <laughs> I, I thought he tossed it and missed. He got, he got another uh, one. Another one. Okay, yeah, yeah he's going to throw it. Another one. Uh, <laughs> another one. Um, I use your modifier for this. Uh-huh. Which is? Uh, seven. Oh, yeah, that hits. Uh, on, on, on the second try, Fortis actually <laughs> does manage to... to <laughs> Chuck the stone at the snake. What do I roll for damage? 2d6 plus 4. Uh, ooh, 13. <clears throat> Wait, I just killed it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Dang. imagine that would have to be pretty low. Okay, yeah. Um. Hip will give him that, you see, gesture. <laughs> Uh, uh, he, he gives an uncertain thumbs up. Uh, his worldview shaken at the fact that these pebbles are better than his arrows. Uh, but yeah, that's that's another snake down. The, the one that took down Tekka. Uh, Pontifex? There's only one left. There is. Uh, I'm going to go it from here. Okay. Uh, this is 17. Oh, right. And is I this one throw. in? No. It has not been touched at all. Uh, 13. This gonna... These things will my... never pass the saving throw. I wasn't saving throw. Baby damage. Baby damage. The smallest of bleeding. Tiny bleeding. <laughs> Tiny bleed. Uh, <laughs> Tiny and then bleed. I'm going to... Faroom is going to move. Uh, sorry, let me check the range on uh, 60 feet. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I think I can probably do it from here. If not, I'm going to move anyways. I'm going to healing word, uh, Tekka. With bonus A. Oh, oh, you're within range, aren't you? Uh, it's range 60. Uh, if not, I'm about to go that way on the horse anyways. Okay, yeah, you got uh, it. You will heal for... 55 feet. Uh, a baby heal. Four. <laughs> yeah! Thank you. Okay. Uh, and then Faroom is going to uh, move. Can I go between these holes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, like this way. And I'm trying to run up on this mm -hmm. thing. I have 60 feet, so I'm actually going to get like over here. Okay. Uh, and then hoof he's <laughs> <laughs> gonna come and trample it uh, yeah it's... I'm gonna go back and forth hoof perfect <laughs> seven does not hit <laughs> uh, rather than a hoofing it just kind of does like this really cute like prancy trot thing over the snake and just kind of fails to hit it entirely but it looks really pretty while doing it he was trying to impress duchess right right oh, he focused Show her on, how on that box. a little bit too much uh, okay <laughs> All right, and that's it Haru, right. don't make such a show of it you dunce <laughs> 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 i don't think try to that... flex and just kill it <laughs> i can kill. use my bonus action to move my hex to this one Okay. That's, yeah. 
I don't use hex much, but I think that's how that works. Uh, yes. And then Pip will chuck his last magic stone at this one. <clears throat> All right. Man, Pip's rolls today. <laughs> wow, that's a hit for sure. What? <laughs> oh, wow. I was going to say triple sixes, but no. Holy crap. The super snake eyes. <laughs> you just wow. had to comment on your rolls. <laughs> wow. Your dice <clears throat> opens their third eye and then rolls snake eyes on all of them. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Don't speak dare about your luck the to me. The dice. Oh, uh, well, at least it hits. <laughs> okay, anything else? I uh, nope. Oh, that hurts okay. to see. Number mm. one is down, and number three has uh, uh, a, a horse and a man riding a horse as possible targets. So I'm gonna do one, two. One is Pontifex. Thirteen doesn't hit Pontifex, does it? No, it does not. Okay. Their fangs have gotten a lot smaller, uh, along with the rest of their bodies, and it just tries to reach up to one of your feet, uh, but uh, as, as you're seated on the saddle, but it's, it's just out of its reach. Uh, you and You think my boots are this nice and they're not snake resistant? <laughs> you fool. Ah, uh, fool indeed. But it is going... Wait, can I... No, <laughs> I cannot. Okay, moving on to, to Casimir. Uh, oh, look what you've given him. Oh, nice. Barum is a bit of a tactician. Oh, it's Pontifex controlling him, but sure. Oh, <laughs> I, I like to uh, be humble. Oh, okay, Casimir, second attack. That's a hit. Third attack. That's a crit! Ah, Casimir fulfilling my, yeah. my, all my dreams. Okay, that's one hit for this much. Oh, you might have it. Let's see. And the crit. Yeah, he does! Oh. Okay, uh, Casimir runs over on all fours, uh, pounces on this snake, and grabs it in both hands. And, and, and pulls it apart until it snaps in half. Whoa. He looks inside of its body. Uh, and only, only pieces of, of gears uh, fall out. Each of you carefully keeping an eye on the snakes for the following few seconds, the silence falls uh, upon the stretch of the, ra of the, uh, of the railway. Uh, you break open the snakes. There's nothing left inside of them. Just broken mechanisms. Or perhaps they are so small we cannot perceive them. It's, it's a warmer <laughs> version of them and they're, they're escaping through the ground right now. You can't even see them. They'll be following us. <laughs> if they touch you, you they die and they're ultra-intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> I get that reference. Um, okay! Wow! All right, congratulations on surviving this fight. I'm going to call a 10-minute break. Sounds, Sounds good. good. We can come back. Oh. Uh, also, oh. uh, before we go on break, actually, I wanted to, to check with you guys. How, how long can each of you stay tonight? I've got like an hour and a half. Yeah, that's about the same as me. Yeah, that's right, probably the end of mine. So. I have a thing. Uh, at about okay. five, which is about an hour and a half yeah, from now. Yeah, an hour and a half. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna end this right at uh, what for me is a uh, five p.m. Got it. All right, I'll let you go for uh, for ten minutes, and I'll I'll see you then. Ooh, cool. Bye, in the everyone. Bed. Bye. Bye. Anyway. Okay. Taka. Mm hmm. Um, you've been you've been bitten by by these snakes on pretty much every limb. Um, and, uh, uh, you could, you could feel the blood loss and the consciousness slipping away from you. 
and you, you felt yourself plunged into thick darkness that you cannot see through. And for a moment... Oh, there we go. For a moment, ah, you saw something beyond that darkness. You felt your, your, your feet touch uh, the ground. Uh, and there, there's an environment around you. You could see metal bars surrounding you. Uh, you're in a small cage, uh, small enough that you wouldn't even be able to sit down. Uh, you're forced to stand in it. And as you squint, you try to see what's beyond the bars. You see these rays of light. It almost feels like lightning is striking the ground just, just a few feet ahead of you. Uh, over and over and over, these bright flashes, you can see them even if you close your eyes. And as you, uh, um, you're, you're trying to refocus uh, um, uh, your your sight, your eyes, uh, and try to understand what in the world is going on here, uh, you feel yourself already getting pulled away from this vision. And you awaken on Duchess's back. It takes you a few seconds to orient yourself and uh, figure out what happened. Uh, and eventually you gently lead the horse back uh, towards the rest of the group. What would you guys like to do? You all got a pretty banged up. Yeah. Mm. Alex, can't you do like a... You did something the other day. It takes a while, but... Oh, like a prayer of healing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a spell that takes a long time, but does ah. it do a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, that, that probably takes his place while we just... Does he have that? I remember him doing it before, but I don't know if he has it prepared. It is prepared. So there you go. Definitely can. We shouldn't do it here, though, because if the gnomes come, they're going to be really mad at us. What? The gnomes! No, look, we yeah. protected the railroad. Look at the, the train tracks. Yeah, they would have done more if not for us. No, mm -hmm. you're right. That is a hard sell for gnomes. <laughs> okay, you're right. If a train comes through here, are they just gonna crash? Probably, unless someone fixes us a. Should we put should we put up like a like a like a sign or something? Crash in, a, in crash in ten feet. Is, there okay, even is that like, close? Is that too far? Oh. What is the worst case scenario? They crash and die. Hey, uh, but whom? The gnomes. I mean, a sign would take like a handful of minutes and like, <laughs> we're all kind of hurt. I, the gnomes are, uh, they'll be fine. And if not, eh. Some gnomes may die, no, but I'm that's I'm being facetious, you're really right, we should do something. What about our, we have, we have like two gnome friends, Professor. <laughs> what if they were on the train? You have uh, two gnome friends. I have two gnome friends. I will make the sign then. Jeez. Pips just starts wandering off trying to find random sticks and branches to put <laughs> or together. Or just will help you out. I feel bad, but at the, the same time, I don't. <laughs> it's a predicament. So, these things also find us without Saskaran. So that means once we're back, we should take care of him as soon as possible, right? Since we're still being attacked. Kazimir says, Yeah, you guys seem to really have an issue with these machines. Yeah! I mean, I would assume they can... I don't know, they have some way of tracking the book. Speaking of... I'll track him with Orm, why not? Okay, um, Orm is an injured. Mm -hmm. 
Does that uh, sound like a plausibility to you? Ring any bells? An uh, ability to track you in particular? Could always find like the book or the you before. Oh no, I'm not there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'm going under mm. the train tracks. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. You'll just derail a gnome train. Not a big deal. <laughs> uh, bear with me for a moment. Sorry, this is like a privacy invasion sort of thing. And the professor is going to start flipping through the book. Uh, and uh, I guess I'll use like detect magic or like identify or like just an arcana check something like that i'm basically looking for any like uh out of place like glyph or rune or something like that that is that may be some kind of like apple air tag you know <laughs> some kind of okay. like magical <laughs> mark that lets um, him find things you have already attempted to identify the book in the past yeah and what it i told guess i'm you more doing this to like, look for a specific thing on like uh, each page you can do one arcana check, but it's going to be a disadvantage. The amount of unknown magic upon this book, it's clear to you that there is, not only there is powerful magic upon it, but there is a lot of it. And you're sort of, oh, it's pretty good. You're sort of wading through it. Um, you know roughly what you're looking for, but there is so much upon this uh, otherwise uh, uh, somewhat simple book that it makes your head spin and it gives you a headache in just the one minute you spend trying to do this. And uh, uh, you have to to back away from it because it's starting to seriously hurt you but you feel like there was something within your reach something you you could almost see with it with your eyes uh some magic upon the book that you're uh, you feel like it had uh some divination properties you can't say for sure whether that was what you were looking for but there is a possibility yeah, I definitely saw something. I just don't know if that's the thing I'm looking for. Something of, divina of the divination kind of magic, <laughs> yes. Hmm. Uh, we'll do more of this later. But I think I might be onto something. Uh, maybe Jamiel uses this divination to perhaps track his belongings. Uh, I hesitate to call you such a thing, but you know what I mean. And that perhaps Tin Heart is able to do the same. Which brings up other concerns. Uh, that might just be wanton paranoia, it's fine. Uh, more ink collects upon the pages and... Uh, uh or asks you a question? Uh, yes, uh, in a way, either uh, Tinhart knows how to track Jamuel's divinations, or uh, this is purely hypothetical, uh, so don't read too much into it. I'm just spitballing, you know, throwing it at the wall and see what sticks, you know, just like trying things out to to, to see. I'm, I'm rambling. Uh, uh, Jamuel is dead, correct? Uh, no, don't worry, I'm about to cause you more. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are positive that Jamuel is dead.
Right, that is the concern. Exactly, if he dies... Uh, you have seen him die and come back before, yes? Does he just stand back up or... Does he have another body of some sort? Right, uh, this is actually uh, disconcerting. Uh, this is <laughs> a low likelihood. Uh, this would be uh, mind-boggling, and I don't even know how. But I also don't know how Jamuel does this. Uh, in the unlikely event that you are Orm Tinhart and Jamuel died, and yet this other being that is going by the name such as yours and is able to track Jamuel's magic, there is a non-zero percent chance that uh, this OTH is in fact not OTH. If you get what I am saying. Again, this is hypothetical, this is purely conjecture. It is bad shit, but... Yes. It would be a kind of twist of the gods playing games with us. No more words appear on, on the pages for a while as if uh, uh, the book is contemplating the, the possibility that you have put forward. Uh, you said the... it yourself. He comes back with a new body and that if he could track you, he would. Maybe he is. Or maybe it means that Jamil was trying to rescue you from your abductors. Us. Uh, these machinations are clearly inspired by the deities. Uh, Jamil was... Well, you know. He was no slouch when it came to knowledge of such things. would not be a stretch to say that his machinations were inspired by them. I don't know. The book says nothing more. Anyways. Just food for thought. I don't know. It, it is better to consider something asinine than to not consider it, I guess. Teacher, you have been speaking many words about magic I do not understand. You know, that's probably for the best. Uh, you're really hurt at the moment, and that I don't think I should add any levels of stress that don't need to. But are you saying that if Jamuel put his name on his belongings, would he be the only one to find his name again. Mm, I don't know. I, uh, I couldn't glean too much. It is complicated is a word for it, but I found something. This would be roughly the moment when Pip and Fortress are back uh, and Talix's spell is, is finished. Uh, oh, can hey, uh, good this. timing. It is... Did you get the sign? Oh. We got stuff to make the sign. Good, good. That is a healing. For everyone? Uh, it's up to six, so I don't think we have more than six hurt. Or. One, two, three, four, six, yeah. Uh, you'd have to exclude Squeak, who took one okay, point of damage. Okay, everyone does. Telix? <laughs> hey, Tekka? What is it? Um, you're you're really good with tools and you have like a saw and stuff. Could you maybe help us put the sign up? I can. We could also build a small fire. Maybe the smoke will guide people here. Oh, and, and Tekka? Yes. 
Did you... Did you see the drow? Hmm. I don't have an answer for you that you will enjoy. I woke up in a small enclosed cage with many lights. I woke up very soon. That and that never happened before, did it? No, I stayed longer. I spoke with the person in that place. I was free before, not now. Well, I hope you don't have to go back there again. <laughs> you I've know never what been. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we've been through, Pip. There is no guarantee for our safety. Part of me kind of wants to see it, but then I know what, what would have to happen for me to see it, and I change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Do, do not seek it, Pip. That is best for you and for Fortis. Mm -hmm. um, which direction did we come from? Uh, this, Should we put a... This would be the west where you came from. When we saw a train coming through, which direction did it go? It came from the west okay so um, I, I've said this previously this railway is not finished it's currently not operational it's about to be um, it's about to be f um, connected to Simlielon but like if, if you were to f keep following the tracks eventually you'd come to an end oh good <laughs> okay um, and then then putting it just like really close to the breakage would be fine um what are you pip riding just, on it uh so pip doesn't have any sort of riding utensil he would look to the professor or talix for that um and leave the the wording up to them i can do it without ink and i can write on anything yeah keep it's flexing true. professor <laughs> just write you know i can do it without ink and i can write on any surface yeah i know the color of your choice i could even do like multi tell me this my every day are okay. <laughs> every day you can tell me the typeface that you wish for ah uh, comic sans just do it <laughs> except for that one <laughs> <laughs> I do not have very many lines, but that is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Pip, but not that much. <laughs> uh, what is Pontifex write? Yeah, he's gonna write, uh, I don't know, something overly wordy in like too small of print to actually be legible unless you're like standing in front of it and okay. reading it. Like, a, like a museum placard that's like, I don't know. Uh, uh, like, uh, mechanical integrity of railroad track for transportation purposes recently compromised <laughs> by, uh, like, something, something, talking about the holes in the floor, and, like, uh, mechanical, <laughs> you know, on this day, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Yeah. At approximately such and such when the sun was this degrees east into the sky. And he'll he'll go on to describe that. Hey, Ten these minutes later the sign is finished. Both. And then on the back side of the sign is like a legal wording. It's like <laughs> the right of the sign is not liable for any damages that may be incurred. And the bottom of the front has the dot 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 with the arrow in the corner that says turn over for more. <laughs> 20 minutes later. Do you agree to these terms? Circle yes or no. <laughs> he writes out yes or no. The entire thing is in a very distinct Helvetica. <laughs> wow. My my devil brethren would be proud of this word. <laughs> that ought to do it. That should explain everything and leave nothing up for a question. I would hate for them to be left with questions unanswered. <laughs> So, so what? What now? Do do we keep walking? You know, if if Orm Tinhart keeps sending these monsters after us in like more than groups of three, we're gonna be in big trouble. Good that he didn't have that idea, huh? 
But yeah, we should probably walk as fast as possible. And I'll work on a solution for this. I dealt with these machines in a large quantity before, but uh, turns out it is more difficult with you all. Don't really have a way to deal with it that doesn't also explode you in the process. <laughs> So I will work on a different solution. Uh, Tekka gonna kicks against the railway track and says, uh, Worms shake earth to unleash goodness. Hopefully this will be a better place now. And begins walking. All right. Take back your 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 minis, everyone. <laughs> the number of like token related things on my table is getting out of hand, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even have my cat. Ah. Gets me every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Options grid. Take that off. Okay. You are three days away from Simlielon. Is that right? One, two, three. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, I genuinely do not recall. We probably haven't. Yeah, okay. So, uh, is there anything you guys want to do on the way for the rest of your journey? Mm. Count down your um, three rations just right away so we don't forget. Uh, Pontifex did have something he wants to talk to Tekka about, um, probably like at night during a watch when other people aren't around because it's kind of a rough subject. No. Mm. Oh. Well, then here you go. Uh, I think, yeah, I, I guess at some point during like a night watch or whatever, uh, whenever Tekka like volunteers to take the watch, Pontifex will volunteer to, to do it with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then kind of uh, like approach him and say, hey, Tekka, the. Um, the other day with the worms, um, I, I was, uh, my head was wrapped around the concept that Tin Heart is something that's, anyways, you, you mentioned uh, that you were, in the brief moments of you being unconscious, uh, you were in a cage in uh, some place, mm -hmm. and you told Pip and Fortus that it is not something that they should chase and I maybe I'm reading too much into this uh, I did not get the inclination that you intend to follow the same advice and uh, just if it is something you are curious about uh, and of course this is a stupid idea uh, but ever since getting this thing, and she, he's going to wave the little, the heart of the weave, that special wand that he, if I understand it correctly, it lets me do uh, miracles of a sort sometimes. The more potent spells require a uh, cost, and this thing is able to negate it of a sort, and if I'm correct, I believe that if you or one of our friends, or anyone for that matter, uh, was to die, uh, not the unconsciousness that you're used to, the, you know, the finale, uh, I could undo it uh, if I got to them fast enough, something like a minute or something. If you ever want to pursue this any further, uh, 
just... I suppose if I am there, do not be afraid of death. I can bring you back. And it could answer some questions you may have. Teacher, is this like what that arch cleric did with those gems? Uh, yes, uh, precisely. It is. Uh, what he did is much grander than anything I could do or could ever do, frankly. But. It's sort of. He required the gemstones and he could bring people back from death. I could perhaps do the same thing, uh, but uh, they cannot be dead for long. And I can do it without the gems as long as I have this. So I'm not recommending to go and get yourself killed or anything of the sort, but you know. But. Uh, just if it is ever something you wish to pursue away from the eyes of the others because, you know, eh, the children and whatnot. And I don't think that Alex would agree with uh, my methodology, but I also know what it is like to have questions that eat away at your mind and knowing that you cannot get the answers. I'm simply telling you that perhaps you could. Teacher, I do not trust that cleric. What happened that day? I felt unnatural. Oh, I, I, it is... Well, it is sort of like what he did, but uh, a little different. Um, mine stems more from the... No, you're right. Mine is much more unnatural. Mine is the arcane weave. The the stuff that I study is a little different from what Alex does and what I can dabble in. Or I suppose you could say my method is more natural. Mine does not involve the deities at all, but the primal elements that everything is composed of, it's such and such and such. So I guess mine is like the low-calorie version. It is the natural, organic resurrection. And I, I don't have, have to use any gems to do it. I have always known death as something final. Even learning what that dog said about Jamil, about Becoming anew in a different form. I do not trust it. Hmm. But if my time comes before my pursuit is over, and you will need my assistance, then you can call me back, if so need. But my questions about that other place, those are not the questions I need answered. I see. Well, uh, okay, I just wanted to, um... I didn't want to give you an idea, but just an option. Uh, and on that note, I haven't necessarily brought this up to the others, because it is a touchy subject, but... In the event that the worst come, and one of them is... Uh, ended, as you put it, killed. Uh, I would ask that you do everything in your power to keep me alive, or I can bring them back. Again, hypothetically, I haven't done this before, but... Then why possible. keep this secret, teacher? Why not tell everyone? Because when you tell someone that they need not fear death, they start to act with less caution, they become stupid, uh, reckless, uh, especially the youth. And My I can only imagine so if, for example, Brooke or Casimir were to find out that uh, their actions, the consequences of them, may not apply, I'd shiver at the thought. And again, it hasn't been tested.
I fear we will only survive this as a group, so we may need this gift you have. Right, uh, precisely. Though I do wish to keep it a secret for now. Uh, like a, a contingency. It is to be used if needed, but I, I cannot do it often. Uh, and I would prefer not to do it at all. Uh, just because death is not permanent does not mean it is not uh, consequential. It could have lasting effects. The method of the dying is usually not good. All of that, but you seem, of everyone here, surprisingly, to be the most logical. I figured I could trust you with this information. I have a goal and I pursue it. If that is logical, then perhaps so. You should also pursue your goals. Oh, believe you me, I am. Every day that I carry this book, I am one step closer. But I need you all. Oh, I need you all. We work I have well power, together. But I am not powerful. You know. Take a nut and kind of just pokes the the fire. Uh, with a stick. Right, well, sorry to uh, approach you with something so macabre, but... If Death curiosity of life. keeps you up at night, we could answer the question. Hopefully, it will never come to this. Hopefully not. And then Pontifex can go back to his <laughs> to his little nook. Okay. Anything else from anyone? Um. <clears throat> sorry. Did was someone else saying something? No. Carry on. Um. Pip uh, would follow through on his promise with Fortis and just fill him in on uh, some of the things that he's seen. Um. Not going into like every single detail, but just giving like a brief explanation for why there are these giant metal constructs around, why they seem to be following us, what we're doing out here, and um, an explanation as to why why Pip is talking through a rat. <laughs> what is an explanation? Uh, <clears throat> uh, he would say. <laughs> he would say that uh, that he himself cannot speak right now because uh, because he's being punished for something that he did uh, by his granny and he says he says that he hopes that his mom doesn't punish him for running off <laughs> a lot of this stuff is is uh, uh, beyond Fortis and he's he he believes you although he struggles with some of the things that you explain to him um, then the thing that he asks for a clarification for the thing that it seems to uh, he seems to care about is um, when, when when you guys are talking about Pip's voice um, he'll he'll say so it's temporary isn't it Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the plan. Um, I've got a, I've got a pretty lengthy list of, list of things to get Granny and, uh, 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 all right, I'll show you. He undoes <laughs> his, uh, scarf and reveals the noose around his neck and mm. holds the long end, uh, where there are now four knots, I think. And... He says, with every list of things I get granny, another one of these knots get, gets undone. 
and once I'm once I'm done with that, then I'll be able to speak again with my with my my real voice. Uh, this also seems to uh, be one of those things that Fortis is really struggling to to understand, to wrap his head around. The town uh, tried to hang me because because I'm because I can do magic and I may have hurt someone. You hurt someone. I didn't. I didn't kill anyone, but huh. you know. Well, that's better than what I have done. He glances briefly to the right, to the left, just making sure that everyone else is asleep, and he gets a little bit closer to you, um, and he says, "I um, when when that whole thing happened to me." The dwarf thing. I have killed a few people. Oh. I did, one night. I just I I didn't even know where I was, and I just felt hungry, and I couldn't think straight, and I came across a a, a group of gnomes. Oh god. I really didn't want to be in Erica. I was afraid that, I don't know, somehow they would know that it was me, that, that, that I did it. I don't know if anyone can ever find out that it was me. But it wasn't your fault, Fortis. You didn't know. Well, how, how do I explain it to them? You, you don't. You get on a ship back to Plurina. That's where your mom wants to go. It Right, that's that's what I'm hoping it will do. Just don't don't even think about it. It wasn't you. <laughs> I've been thinking about it every day, every night. I You guys have some strong opinions on gnomes, but the ones back in my in my town, they've they've been good to us. They've been keeping monsters at bay. Uh, they've been uh, building the, the new the new train that's gonna come to our town. It's they've never bothered us, and I didn't want to kill any of them. And I'm I am a murderer now, Pip. I don't know what to do with this. I, it's not who I want to be. Um, mm, um, I, I, I don't know, um. I'm sorry, you were sharing with me your own struggles, and I just had to start talking about me. No, no, don't, don't be sorry about that. Look, if... Uh, I'm, I'm where I am because I made choices, and I made a lot of bad ones, but... But you didn't make the choice to become a werewolf. You didn't make the choice to kill those people. I made a choice to go after that one wolf. The one you guys help, helped me kill. That's... That's how it all started. I put myself in danger. I, I almost got myself and my brother killed. And then I ended up getting other people killed. I, I'm not innocent and we can take a ship and go back to plur and I, and I can just try not to not think about it but how could i ever forget I, how could i ever forgive myself i mean there's nothing you can do to take it back so what are you going to do? Turn myself in? No, Fortis, no, you can't do that. You're... <laughs> You're not a werewolf anymore. It, I it's, know, but, but those it's people, done. They, they have 
They have families, and don't they deserve to know what happened? Don't they deserve to get their hands on me? What if they kill you? Portis just looks down. Hey, Fortis. Look. I've been safe from execution once before. So if you turn yourself in, you bet I'm going to save you too. <laughs> Thanks, Pip. I don't I don't know how you can make this better. But But I know you're not a monster. Thank you. Look, I've... Me and this group... I mean, I, li I like them a lot. I really do. More than I've liked anyone before. I mean, they're... They really took me in, you know? But... That doesn't mean they're perfect. We've killed some people too. That big guy? He's he's part of the Phantoms, you know, Brooke. He I mean I watched him kill some sailors and and We all killed that That Krelko, I think they're called. The White Wolf. I don't know. We're just doing what we all think is best. But sometimes it's not good enough. Sometimes we make mistakes. Things that we wish we could take back. But... We can't just stop, you know? Hey, uh, Pip. Hmm? Don't tell them uh, what I just told you. No. No, I won't. Thank you. He's going to put a hand on one of Pip's shoulders and give him a nod and then let go. And look away. I need to go to sleep. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you can go home after all this is done. <laughs> yeah. You've got a brother to look after. And your mom. Or does not, and uh, heads for his own bedroom. Hmm. Pip will, uh, forego climbing his usual tree today and uh, <laughs> just sit at the base of it and look over, glance over at Squeak on his shoulder and they just share a brief telepathic conversation before eventually they fall asleep as well. Okay. Uh, was there anything else that any of you wanted to do or talk about? Okay. Just drop the die. Oh, it's too far. It's gone. Okay. Looks like you are good for the rest of the journey. Me, pick these back. Oop, oop, no. Oh. Duchess, bar room, and uh, I have hidden Alex. <laughs> Right. So, my friends, uh, you continue your journey following the tracks until um, about a days away from um, from Sim Lielon, they uh, did reach an abrupt end. Uh, nobody is currently working uh, in this area, and you just. You leave the tracks and you uh, 
the the following day uh you reach the city today uh that would make it uh, uh one two three that would make it the ninth of mundo the month of the fox and uh, uh allow me to welcome you back to Simleon. Wow. It's still there. <laughs> ah, the city? Still there? I hope yeah, so. Yeah, the city. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, there's, there's a brief moment where as you approach, you almost hold your breath and you squint until you begin to see movement uh, in the city. People walking around, uh, living, breathing, being awake and conscious and not ensnared by, by, a terrible, uh, by terrible magic. Uh, the city is, uh, yeah, uh, not quite as you left it. It looks like uh, um, there are some new decorations that are now uh, being uh, put up in between the buildings. Uh, and you can see that there is some advertisement for the upcoming uh, spell casting competition uh, that will take place in six days from now. <coughs> oh boy. It will. So what is our plan? How long are we staying? Till after this competition? Yeah, I don't particularly think we have to stay, but we just have to be here for it. <coughs> I have a 10% off coupon. Ah. Bro, so, what do we do with Seth Karen then, in the meantime? We because... must make a decision now. Yeah, the longer we wait, the more expensive this will be. I... Um, do I get a vote? Of course. I'm... I'm getting a bit worried about the, the metal creatures that are following us. They keep getting worse and worse. I... I think... I would really like to... To, to talk to Orm Tinhart. Maybe Saskaren could take us there? Yeah, if it's not too far away, we could make it back in six days, right? Unless that is not something we want to risk. It just seems like a bit of a leap, you know? Like, if these are the things that it is sending after us, I could only imagine the horrors that are there, you know? Yeah. Teacher, this will not I'm get easier. If he's able to track us, as I firmly believe he can, I would assume they would know when we are getting closer, and the closer we get, likely the more frequent the attacks would become, and... We're getting attacked as often as he can pump them out. Which I assume is fairly often. Huh. Or, once we get close enough and he realizes that we're coming to him, he will stop sending these things after us since we're bringing Orm to him. We need to confront this. Yeah, I mainly want him out of the jail, so... And since those things finding us, even when Saskarin isn't around, or they say those things can find us, getting rid of him doesn't really make sense. So... Bringing him or letting him lead us to Orn would probably be the best way. Plus, there there might be people who could help us. Like, maybe maybe Grangina would help us, and and Casimir, you can come too. Am I getting paid? 
I'll pay you. How much money do you have? Then? I have a lot of money. <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> how much you looking it. for? <laughs> well, hiring uh, a a phantom guard for a day would be ten gold, and then oh. we'll see how many days you need before. Oh yeah, I can afford that. <laughs> Can you afford 20 gold per day? No. <laughs> ah, well... <laughs> ah, d don't get... Oh, was that an exception check? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, it's actually plus four. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, don't get me wrong, I would love to help you out with this problem you've had but i've been missing from simulinum for a while and there's a lot of stuff i need to get to get done especially in in brunov's absence so would you be ready in six days i told you he's funny <laughs> come on you can't just Get a prize out of us, and then not follow us through. Bad. Ah, but uh, Brooke, I'll consider it. Not good enough for the rest. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 sure. What do we do then? Well, we can get to talking with him again. Let's see what else we can get out of him. And how far away Orm is. Mm. Do you think it will be much different now, our conversation? No, probably not. But maybe if we tell him that we're bringing him to Orm, Orm maybe that will lighten his mood. Either way, I think the professor and I could get some information out of him. Whether he wants to or not. Uh, it sounds a little haunting coming from uh, one <laughs> as young as you, but uh, I think you are factually correct. I still have his fingernails. Oh, God. That uh, somehow makes that even worse. <laughs> All right, so that's our plan. And get to well, work. At least <laughs> Talix might disagree, but he's thinking really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Talix, if you have a problem with that, you have to tell us later. <laughs> tell you what, Talix has something else he needs to be doing anyway. Probably. Oh. Uh, uh, or maybe not. Let's just let's just have him come come with. Are you, are you all like planning to go talk talk to Siskarin? Talk quotation marks. That reminds me, I can't get, I can't lead them there, right? Wasn't that a thing? That's right. Yeah, we can't go down. Yeah, where the cell is. Unless you're all willing to get your little tongue tattooed. I don't think that's happening. Just well, gonna put it. I've never gotten a tattoo before. <laughs> uh, you don't want that. I'm not um, even sure my tongue can hold ink. <laughs> <laughs> so we could do it just like the last time. Get another room. And then bring Karen there. Okay, you want me to go to go grab him, take him to, to your to your inn? Yeah, uh, are we going to do this in the inn? Seriously? Yeah. Uh, what That's where we did it him? last time. Yes, but like we I mean we weren't so convicted to um what You know uh, it's fine. Maybe I'm misunderstanding oh, what you were on, wanting Kylo to do. Oh, Kylo is okay. one of us. He will not ask any questions. 
It's not him I'm worried about the questions, it's the cleaning crew. It, it, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a elf place, they, they don't ask questions, it's fine. That's a lie, they ask a lot of questions. Casimir is off. Um, as Remember for... to gag him! <laughs> <laughs> um, Fortis uh, um, is ready to leave you guys. Um, he, uh, it's possible for him to get uh, uh, to find a cart that would head to Vera um, and uh, uh, make his way to the, to the neighbor, neighbor in town. Uh, although he oh. he does need to have his <laughs> doesn't have any money on him. <laughs> I Wait, can no. help with that. I am rich. Somebody <laughs> give him money. Oh, was it you? I don't know, but I'll give him more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will give him uh nineteen gold pieces. Uh, yeah, as he as he takes the money, he you nonsense know, says he's. <laughs> More than enough. And I also give him a uh I give him a toy pop gun <laughs> that I got from the store. Uh and I say, in memory of our first expedition together. And then I give him a gnomish etch a sketch. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, that's for alien. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, he he, he, he he looks at the last story that you hand him over, and he, he chuckles a little bit and, sa and says, Yeah, yeah, he's going to love this one. <laughs> Thank you, Pip. Mm hmm? Hey, um, is that enough money? I have a lot That's, of money. It's, it's plenty. I don't really know how much this is worth. <laughs> it, it, this, is, this will be more than enough. Well, uh, thank you, all of you. Um, good luck, you know, with, with everything. Yeah, you too. Safe travels. Stay with your family. Fortus not, and uh, he leaves. Hey, you have my world point card, right? Uh, y <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Keep in touch. <laughs> okay. I will. Um, alright. Kailu at the Dragon Wagon always has a room uh, set aside for you. Ever since you uh, saved the entirety of the city. Uh, Be you even better. Had, you even had arrangements to have it uh, uh, be... Um, to have a room set aside for you guys specifically for the spell casting come during the, t the time of the, of the summer solstice, which is when the spell casting competition takes place. Uh, and he had originally told you that he was already completely booked up for c way in advance uh, for that particular event. But uh, as you as you come back today and you walk in, he says he took care of it. He kicked someone else out. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, you'll be able to stay. He also has... Hey, that's my guy. That's why we go to the dragon wagon and not the goat <laughs> boat. <laughs> or the, 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 god, the fox box or god forbid the awesome possum. <laughs> he also uh, has a message for Brooke. Oh. Um, has, uh, uh, when he walk in and he's getting you the, the, the key to the room and he's telling you about it. Uh, he says, uh, right, uh, by, by the way, Brooke, I... I have a message from that uh, uh, that Firbolg you were looking for. Oh! Yeah, I yeah. Uh, uh, tracked him down and uh, told him that you were looking for him and I uh, well, he said to, to leave you a message. He said uh, that he'll be gone from Sim Leon, but he'll be back by the summer solstice and he'd like to meet you by then if you're ready. That, that's what he said, if you're ready. I'm ready? When is the summer solstice again? 
Is that it happening in the next six days? The summer solstice is it is the thing that's happening in three days. Oh. Well. Today's the ninth, so it's happening on the fifteenth. Okay. Did he say where he wants to meet? Uh, well, I told him that you'd be staying at, at, at my inn almost certainly, so he said he can just come over. Huh. Well, that's good. Thanks. Yeah, uh, no problem. Ready for what? Did he not give you any more? Hmm. That's okay. Alright, let's go into the room and wait for Cass. Alright, shortly after, uh, a, uh, the, the halfling shows up with this, just this big sack on his shoulder. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, the, the sack is, you, you hear it before you even freeze him, uh, you can hear the, uh, the quiet, soft weeping coming from it. Oh. Uh, and when he places uh, the, the, the sack on the bed and, and uh, removes it, you can see uh, uh, Suskirin isn't doing so particularly well. Uh, his skin looks more shriveled and, and bluer than usual. Uh, he, he still looks very thin uh, and his eyes are just red from... Uh, a lot of crying that he must have done recently, and as soon as, as soon as he, uh, once once the, once he can see, he rubs his eyes and, and, and squints. He seems to struggle a little bit to put you in focus, and then sees uh, you guys, and uh, his eyes widen a little bit, uh, and he's, he's he starts to say, I, I, I am sorry, I am sorry. Hey, I, I said I gag am him. Sorry. No shit, he's gagged. Fuck. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> uh, mm. Professor, you want to be good good guard or bad guard? <laughs> oh, we we are guards. No, it's t mm. I think it might lose some of the oomph if the child claims to be the bad one. I can be bad guard. No, I know that you can. It is. I'll be good guard. <laughs> okay, and plus, uh, let's be honest. I'm used to being the bad guy lately. <laughs> hey, Saskaren. Hey, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you can speak. <laughs> now I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have the good bad conversation right in front of him? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if we. If we take that gag off, do you promise not to teleport away? Uh, he nods. I could just insight like, check. <laughs> remove his lower jaw. He shakes his head. He shakes his head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Pippi, he just looks really sad. That actually kind of breaks my heart. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the gag off. Okay, and uh, now, now what I said earlier applies. <laughs> I, I, I am sorry. I am sorry. What are you sorry for, Saskiran? Uh, I think, I think very hard about what I do, and I am sorry. You almost killed everyone in the whole city. I am sorry. Mm. Hey, your your friend Orm. Orm Tinhart. Friend? Yeah, you said he's your friend, right? Mm hmm. Do you know where he is? Uh, when Pip asked that question, I want to do my, uh, I detect thoughts and, like, immediately try to bore as deep into his head as I can. Jason? Okay. Jason! Oh. I'm on You're just in time for the torture. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> the one you pushed for. No, no, he didn't push, the no. The one I pushed no, for? No, he's lying. What? 
Uh, we're si in Sim Why, why are you? You're Dragon already Dragon. blaming me for shit, Dennis. <laughs> 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 it turns um, out that whenever we let uh, Sid control your character, Talix becomes way more bloodthirsty. He's <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> barbarian. Like, he can't like, fight <laughs> things. He has to like lasso them with his fishing pole and like ride them and all that stuff. So he's like, well, <laughs> if anyone's got to kill something, I guess it's got to be Talix. Mm. <laughs> you got a gun, by the way. Mm. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I got a battle axe now. It's sweet. You derailed a gnome train, killed like dozens of them. Pontifex clapped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I had to take yeah, thoughts uh, on him. And yes. Immediately um, dig. The moment when Pepe asks if uh, Siskira knows where Orm Tenhart is, um, uh, Pontifex, you get, you get this visual image for a moment of a place uh, that is outside of the city. It feels like it's out um, out in the wilderness. Um, and it's just, it's just this brief uh, glimpse of a location. And just by seeing his surface thoughts, you don't really see, you don't see much of the details, but it seems like he, he thought of a place when Pip asked. Uh, and and says, Karen, meanwhile, he nods and says, yes, yes, I, I know where... Orm is. You but don't wanna you don't wanna stay in prison, do you? No. No. No, no. we don't we don't wanna keep you there anymore. We really don't. But since you're sorry, maybe you could take us to Orm and we don't have to put you back? Uh, I am sorry. But, Don't be but, sorry, just show me and Pontifex is gonna like smash his fist into a nearby table or something and, <laughs> and dig. Show me where he is. Oh you're you're digging his thoughts? Yeah, I'm digging. Okay, that's a save, right, for me? Yeah, seventeen. Uh wisdom. Uh seventeen wisdom. a nine. Wait, he has advantage. Uh, yeah, he has advantage. It counts as a magical effect. And, and a spell. Is. It's a spell, mainly. Uh, oh, that still fails. Never mind. Uh, Show me your secrets, you shit. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, uh, so Skirin covers his face uh, behind his hands, behind his arms. Um... And uh, as he's doing that, almost like the, the pr pr protecting himself from the rest of you, um, Pontifex, you get uh, your vision becomes a little bit clearer of, of this place that Saskarin associates with where Orm is. Uh, you can see a, a river nearby and, uh, and a forest nearby. It's a, it's a pleasant, uh, uh, wide open area, uh, not a building in sight, uh, but you see some some machines moving around, you see one that is shaped uh, in the form of an owl bear, and another that looks like a goat, but y your your attention, Saskarian's attention is not on the machines that are around this place, it is on the single um, structure, so to say, that is in this area, uh, that looks like a door frame and a door and no actual building attached to it uh, it just looks like in the middle of nowhere there is just a wooden door uh pip to you um saskarin says i uh i show i show where friend is but but i i need Book. You need the book to show us where he is? I need to bring back book. If we go and see him, then that's something we're going to show him. Y you bring book? No, Pip looks around to everyone else in the room. Well, we're not going to leave the book. Friend, friend is close. Friend is very close. Uh, I show you. What does he look like? Show me his face. 
Um, while out loud, uh, Saskarian ju just just says that he can he can take you to him. He can show you. He doesn't like get what you're actually asking. But of course, as as you're asking, uh, he you um, get a a glimpse of. Uh, um, a person in his in his mind in his memories, uh, someone short and and, and stout, uh, clearly a, a dwarf from uh, from Plurna, uh, but part of his body is uh, is missing. Uh, it looks like some of his limbs are made out they, they are part machine, uh, just like the ones you have been destroying lately. But they they, they take the place of his proper arms so they and they are very detailed uh, he has he has fingers and, and hands uh and uh the, the dwarf himself uh, you see that um a glimpse of a long beard besides the fact that he's part that, that some of his limbs are part machine he's otherwise uh, a pretty average looking dwarf um you you may not from this sim single glimpse be able to recognize him in a crowd but the, the rest of his body definitely makes him stand out <laughs> hmm. and where did you meet him uh out loud uh <laughs> S says Kevin, re uh, replies um uh, mm, I meet friend uh, uh, outside, uh, n near, n near w water, a and you catch a glimpse of a memory uh, by uh, by the sea. There is a shoreline. Um, you, you you feel this this sense of hunger coming from uh, uh, from Saskara, and, and then a, a hand uh, reaching towards him pulling out uh, uh, a nicely packaged uh, little box of, of food, of rations, uh, as Saskarian looks up at the same face you, you saw a moment ago. Hmm. Am I getting any vibes that he's hungry now? Yeah. I think Pontifex is going to pull out one of his rations, which is uh, probably some kind of like dried seafood type ration. Given me being what I am. And uh, I'm going to hold the, the ration out to like to his face to like allow him to eat from it. Am I your friend now? Um, as your spell, it's been about a minute, as your spell begins mm -hmm. to fade, um, you just see uh, Saskarin hesitate and then pull away from you a little bit. He doesn't Pip answer, going... but he's visibly scared. Pip is going to remember his last encounter with Saskarin, remember what his greatest fear was, and say, You don't have to be alone anymore, Saskarin. Just Roll have to... persuasion check. Can I help him on this? With the with the you food offering, can. since I'm a proficient. I, you're the bad cop. I, yeah, I have a feeling you're right. Uh, that's a is that an eighteen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Saskarian's body language is still very withdrawn. He's pushing himself back um, against the wall as much as he can. He looks even smaller than he uh, than he uh, already is. Um, and, uh, but he, his eyes uh, um, have left Pontifex, and they are now on on Pip as he um, slowly gives a small nod and and says, ah, "I." I show you, I show you, my friend, and you bring book, and then we're, then we're friends too? I don't think any of us want to fight right now. I think it would be nice if we could have an, a good talk. I'd like to be your friend. Uh, 
I... I am sorry. What I do, I, I am sorry. So, I, I have a question for the DM. Yeah? Does he seem like... Does he seem completely different from the last from time? From last time, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm hmm It has been... Um... You captured him 21 days ago. <laughs> almost, uh, uh, almost a month ago. Uh, he has been in prison oh. ever since. God damn it. When I'm offering oh, him a no. chunk of dried up compressed seafood spam, does that not make me his friend immediately? <laughs> um, so, yeah. There's no guarantee he doesn't flip flop on us if we take him to Orm, but I think this is good for us if we can get there. Um, but Pip, Pip right now, he's feeling pity on him and he's, uh, he's going to say, what do you like to eat, Seskaren? Fish. Fresh <laughs> fish. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll get you some. We'll all go to Orm together. I don't know when, but soon. F friend is close. Uh, I take you now. Out of character. What are we doing, guys? <laughs> uh, I take you now. We we see him um t t t tomorrow. Mm -mm -mm, maybe two days. Mm. I I walk fast. This is cutting it close. <laughs> yes, <laughs> wouldn't want to miss the the wizards tournament. I, <laughs> I cannot miss the wizards tournament for reasons you do not fully comprehend. <laughs> if the Aradovas are hosting this, I, I will be there. What do you guys think? Tomorrow? Two days? Are we doing it at all? I mean, if we wait six days, then you said you would pay Cass, right? Join us. Mm -hmm. We might be able to convince Cass to come sooner. <laughs> it's in two days. I mean, if we meet your furbolg friend, maybe we'll, maybe he's a badass. Who knows? <laughs> huh. We'll maybe see. he's a friggin' archmage or some <laughs> something to have in our pocket, you know? Pocket arc, arc mage. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we should Obviously, be afraid of it. Since we just decided against it. But, uh... I want to go see Tin Hark for sure. Oh yeah, we're going to see him. I said, but... Hmm. So... It, okay, what, so... Is there a big reason why we shouldn't go ASAP? When, when is this tournament? Six days. Yeah, we can make that. That's yeah. easy. Um, so, out of, out of character, has, I, I don't think Pip is smart enough to pick up on this, but has anyone else's characters, like, connected the dots of, wait, has Pontifex even mentioned that it was just one door that was in this place, not connected oh, to the walls or anything? Yet. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> because that's like, woo, 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 <laughs> red lights in my brain. <laughs> But no, um, Pontifex hasn't said anything because Suscarin's so scared, so scared here, and my my thing just ran out like, right. less than a minute. Ago. Okay. Um. So we definitely need at least a day to prepare. Mm -hmm. Well, and if we are going, it, it is fine as long as we are all on the understanding that if the time comes, Farum and I are going to leave. <laughs> Mid battle. Well, that's time. <laughs> two days. If it is two days travel, 
happen if uh, we would go there, have two days to whatever, and then two days journey back. I could perhaps move at a faster pace with Farum, but... So do we go tomorrow or in two days? I, if we I are going you know. to do this, the sooner the better. I, if we I cannot you know. wait six days to go. I think we I think we need a little bit, Saskarin. We just We don't, just don't, got don't, here. Don't 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 do don't put me back. Don't put me back uh underground. Let's bring him with us. Am I still supposed to be the bad I don't even know if I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> you are I here, think you, you are, are here. Yeah. If I'm still the bad guy, I, I'm supposed to threaten him or something, no, no, right? No, 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 we can both be good good guard. I, I feel can't. bad for him. You can't oh, really let because him you're the good guard. Right? I feel nothing for him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just yeah, have to keep to watch. And what if we do put you underground, huh? What are you going to do about it, you little shit? Hey, stop talking to him like that. What? Are you... Oh, sorry. He starts sobbing. No! We won't put yes. you back. Yes, do you rue your no. actions? Do you fear me? He he said sorry like 50 times. <laughs> there is a difference between saying it and feeling it, and I don't get any I, images I, he's of He's crying! Me. Sorry, I feel sorry. We won't. We won't put him back. We won't. People put him already back. done inside checks. I <laughs> rolled um, a five. Give us <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do one right now. Yeah, toss another one in. As soon as Ooh. I get my character sheet up. <laughs> All right. Okay. Roll. Yes. <laughs> Nine? Nailed it. Hmm? Um. Okay. Okay. I mean... Uh, to all of your eyes, this, um, this little creature, um, he, he, it's almost like he looks more pathetic than ever. He's, he's, black fur that covers his lower body is, is so, uh, um, sp oh, what's the word? Men Menji? Menji? Yeah, Menji, yeah. Menji, yeah. Um, like, most of it is straight up gone. Uh, he still smells really badly. Uh, he, w when he speaks, it sounds like his, um, uh, his throat is pretty dry, his mouth is dry, uh, and, uh, uh when he just looks at you with his big teary eyes uh none of you detect a hint of deception in his voice he is uh he as far as all of you can tell he is genuinely distraught genuinely sorry for what he has done and genuinely scared to go back in that prison do i like uh, do i hit him what do i, what do I no. do with you? we give him fish Oh God! Uh, I know that you stuff. give him fish. That's like your role or something. I I just don't know what to do with mine. I've never went this far. I think we can your just part is done. Yes. yes. Oh. Then we just oh. need someone to keep an eye on him all the time. I'm I'm gonna go get him some fish. Okay. Let's get him out of here, or wherever we. If are. we need someone to oh, keep an eye, in. I could. Oh, let's get, get him out of the cat. head. The cat can see invisible things. I don't know. What cat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the fucking bird thing. Wait. Where is it? <laughs> I don't know. She does what she wants. It's a cat with wings. What do you Has expect? Has the cat ever come back? Did that happen? No, no it's I'm been gonna, like half a I'm month. I'm trying to use my action to see if I can perceive like where she's at. Oh, no. <laughs> you cannot. Oh, she's not even remotely in the zip code. No okay. way. <laughs> I don't know. You have to have some way. You get Squeak here all the time. I guess he's just always here. No, I've explained it to you. You just think about him and snap your fingers and boom, they're there. Yeah, I'm thinking about the cat and there's, there's no boom. 
There is a connection. What? Mm. All right, She's until a cat you're... and a bird, and I'm a frog, and those are both my mortal enemies. There is a <laughs> negative connection. <laughs> Casimir, Casimir holds up a finger and says, So I'm not ah. taking him back to prison? <laughs> uh, you're not taking him back to prison, and until you figure okay. out your cat problem... I can take the first shift of what uh, oh, It's not a problem. Right, but but G guys, before I go, Brooke, you oh yeah, you know, the the fee for keeping him in prison. How much is it? It's ten gold per day. <laughs> that makes two hundred and ten. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a lot more expensive than the end. Well, well, it's an anti-magic prison cell. Of course, it's more expensive than the inn. Two hundred ten divided by five. <laughs> <laughs> so forty-two for from each. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, hold on change now. Okay. Is there forty-two from each? I yeah, have, I'll give I you have forty-two. Much. Okay, no problem. Oh, Seems like I don't remember where all this rich. came from, but like I feel uh, like a few of us have an exorbitant amount of money. It's only Tekka who I think has given all of his money away, hasn't he? Oh, wait. Or does <laughs> he still have some? Ton. There's some left. Okay. Oh, do you 42? have it? Do you have it, Tekka, or I can pay it for you? Uh, no, Tekka refuses to pay. Okay. <laughs> you know, he has enough. money, but he won't. I... All right. Send <laughs> you it. Pipple pay takers. Pip did 42 twice, so 84. Oh no, you're overcomplicating things. No, oh, we all just yes. pay 42, just <laughs> Pip is paying twice. Are you sure? Oh, why am I saying this? It is a child. What <laughs> need to see for money? So. I have all of these expensive components. I'm an old man. I have health care I have to worry about. The bills. <laughs> I have the house in Simleilan. Or not in Simleilan. <laughs> LNR. Then I, I'm old. I get things mixed up. <laughs> um, He's a young buck. Okay, His then. early days have yet to begin. Casimir collects the, the, the money and nods and says, <laughs> All right. He's all yours. Yeehaw. <laughs> Yeehaw. He just slaps uh, uh, Brooke uh, on like his uh, on his uh, on his side on his hip uh, uh, <laughs> and says I'll see you around yeah good the luck with doing whatever you need the to do uh huh yeah good, good good luck to you too with whatever it is that you're that you're gonna be doing yeah yeah see? since we're probably gone during the gone during the time if you see another freewalk tell him to wait we'll be back soon <laughs> Okay, Brooke. Wait, we're going to go deal with Tinhart and uh, Casimir isn't going to be with us? I mean, he said... Casimir, oh. I will pay you 20 gold for every day we go. He I was just saying that we, maybe we wait for the Furbolg <laughs> in case he's some sort of arch wizard or something. I, I didn't know we were going to be weakening ourselves before this. Twenty clink, gold clink, per day. Clink. Fine. I, you know, this is going to get me into so much trouble. <laughs> Supposed to be doing other things right now. Do those things pay twenty gold a day? They don't. They don't. All right. When are we leaving? He like he he cracks his knuckles. More uh, right? sooner rather than later, oh. just so that we have oh. enough time and I don't have to leave. <laughs> So, yeah, I cannot yeah. express to you in words how deadly serious I am. <laughs> so, are we leaving now or tomorrow? The dead seems to come closer every time we I speak think, about it. I think tomorrow, right? <laughs> Why are you waiting until tomorrow? Did oh, we already rested, didn't we? Oh yeah, it's been it's been days. It's been several days. Um, uh, what time is it? You have a ride here around noon. It's just a little bit after noon. And how long does it take to get there? Two days? Uh, Did Skirin, we go? Saskarin said tomorrow, and then he corrected himself and said maybe two days. Oh, okay. Because um, he's fast. So, so we could go out, get get some supplies, and then go. 
yeah. Feed Saskaran a nice fish dinner. Or lunch. <laughs> uh, I think we should probably grab some healing potions. <laughs> Um, I said I would end the session at 5, and now it's 8 minutes past 5. Whoops. Uh, so, you can figure out what preparations you need to do uh, in between this session and the next, but I am going to call mm -hmm. this one here. And can we get Saskaran a bath? 